computer suddenly craps out on me, well, you know, All it right. happens sometimes. I'll okay. be back. I'll be back. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I go ahead and I went ahead and started it here. And uh, so welcome everybody to the House of Horrors, uh, episode 55 tonight. Uh, we have special guest Maria Olson. How are you doing this week? I'm good. I'm good. I, for one, do not have a tornado warning um, <laughs> because I'm in California right now, but I did have two weeks ago when we were shooting in Missouri. So, mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that's right. Weren't you uh, shooting a movie this past week? You were telling me when we did the promo that before the show, you were uh, about to go filming. Yes, uh, we just wrapped on shooting uh, the horror feature straight on till morning, um, just outside of St. Louis in Missouri. It was so much fun. I have uh, the bruises to prove it. Yes. No, no. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> Uh, that should be interesting. Uh, do you know when there's going to be a date on that or not yet? I'm not sure. Um, I know we still have quite a bit to do. Um, for instance, we got to the house we were shooting and decided the basement would not work for our scenes. So we have to still shoot the entire basement sequence in Los Angeles. Um, and then we have to do some um, ADR and for the voiceover scenes and things like that. So um, it's still quite a long way to go with that one. Okay. So other than that, uh, have a good week. See any good movies yourself or have any uh, spare time that you got to do whatever you enjoy doing? <laughs> um, actually, yeah. Now that I'm back in L.A., I've started watching again. Um, for it, I'm like stupid this way, but I'm doing things alphabetically. So I watched um, a film called Aftermath, which was an interesting take on a horror house, mystery, a haunted house mystery. Then I watched Army of the Dead and I absolutely loved it. Yeah, loved it, loved it, loved it. Yeah. Have you seen I, the prequel, The Army of Thieves, yet? I have not. Uh, maybe that'll be tonight. It looks it, it it looks interesting. I saw the trailer after Army of the Dead. Yeah. Mm, I still got to watch that, <laughs> but yeah, I'll check that out myself. So yeah, yeah it's mainly about one of the um, the safe crackers. The fun, or I think it's the one that they take into the city with. Um, um, I forget what his name, but he was, uh, I want to say he was German or something. The funny, uh, uh, the funny Dieter. Guy. Yeah. Yeah. Him. Yeah. It's basically, he's basically the main character in the, in the thieves one. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. It was so much fun. And um, yeah, the zombie queen stole the show. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, zombie queen. Sounds interesting. Just the name itself. Yes. All right. Uh, well, let's see. Uh, we got uh, John's here, Doomsday's Crypt. He says hello to all of us. So, welcome, John. And then, of course, uh, let's see. We got my mom came in. <laughs> She's here. She says welcome. Hi, mom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's yeah. always in here watching us. You're very loyal. <laughs> yes. Nice. Sometimes I'm like, please don't watch me, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think I'm worse off though than you are, but I, I've only had family members watch once. I forget what episode it was, but <laughs> <laughs> was it was it the David Howard Thornton one or no? Who was it? No, was um, oh, no it was somebody know. else. I don't remember who it was, but mm. yeah, it was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky it was just like cousins. Uh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, we get a little crazy sometimes. <laughs> so it's crazy like, is good. So. Yeah. Hey, but I mean, it's horror, you know, what do you expect? You know, horror, you know, fun. Exactly. You got to know what you're coming into. <laughs> so you've been warned. <laughs> <laughs> Listener, viewer, beware. <laughs> Just oh. forgot to put my phone on mute there or else that could have been interesting. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, let's go back a little bit growing up um did you ever do acting in school uh, was there any actors or movies that inspired you oh absolutely i grew up in a place called east london in south africa um i've been on stage um either doing like dance shows or plays or musicals since i was six years old um all throughout school and beyond shall we say um I remember watching some of the iconic like 70s movies like um, Agnes of God and Romancing the Stone and The Accused and things like that and thinking like, yeah, I would I would like to be what these these women are. Look, Jane Fonda is playing a psychologist in Agnes of God. I, I want to 
be a psychologist when I grow up. Oh wait, Ka uh, Kathleen Turner is playing uh, 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 an author, a writer in *Romance in the Stone*. I want to be a writer. And then I figured out that actually no, um, when I grew up, I wanted to do what the actresses were doing and play the roles in the films that I was watching. And mm -hmm. once I figured that all out, it was it was clear. <laughs> So um, did you go in college? Did you do any short films then? Or when was your first uh, uh, introduction into the business? Um, no, I was in South Africa until 2005. And I was very, very far away from the film industry. Um, I did some radio spots, some commercials. Um, but it was mainly stage um, musicals and um, straight plays, things like that. Um, when I got here, I spent a year trying to figure out where the hell I was. Um, and here is Los Angeles, by the way. And um, after that, I was like, you know, you've been wanting to do film your entire life. So, like, do it. And I started submitting for everything and its cat. And eventually um, I started getting auditions and booking roles. But my very first film, uh, very, very first film, what how that happened was I was stage managing a production at our local theater. And um, the second lead actress decided she had to do, uh, she had to shoot a commercial that Friday night. Um, so the director sort of looked at me and said, okay, you're up on Friday. And I'm like, excuse me, what now? Um, <laughs> and he said, you're going to be off book. And I'm like, well, damn. Um, so I took a day off. I learned all the lines, including the Spanish, which I had no idea what I was saying. And I did the show that night off book. I only like, destroyed one line so i think i did well um but the guy that i was playing opposite he was like holy crap and when he produced his film next year he offered me a role in it and i was like sure i'll try this strange new medium that i've never worked in before but always wanted to um and that was a film called sam hell which is um on youtube at the moment it's really really good if you can track it down and watch it horror movie of course mm -hmm. um uh, and that was how I got into film, really sort of strangely weird way. In the beginning, I didn't want to because I'm very, very comfortable with stage, very, because I grew up on stage. Um, and um, I even got this audition for my second film. They phoned me and said, come in. And I'm like, really? Really? I, do I have to? And they were like, well, you don't have to. But um, but I did. I came in. I booked the role. And that was... Um, uh, a gothic tale, which no one can see because the producers had a fight and they forbid the film from ever being released. So mm. that happened too. Yeah. <laughs> That's a shame. Uh, for is. some th uh, theater people, what does off book mean? Oh, off book means you have to have all your lines memorized. So you're not holding the play book in your hand to read your lines. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So that yeah, a lot of lines. <laughs> <laughs> So you said uh, you did a lot of plays and musicals. Did you have any favorite one? And uh, so did you sing in them too, I assume? or, just <laughs> <play> or... <laughs> um, Yes, my favorite was Fiddler on the Roof. Um, I played in Fiddler when I was 18 years old. I played the third daughter, Chava. Um, yes, I sang, although maybe I shouldn't have, <laughs> thinking back. Um, but yes, um, I used to sing in um, musicals in South Africa, but once I hit it, Los Angeles, like, no, I'm just not competitive in that area at all because you've got some insanely talented people here. Um, so that's not my strength, but I can if I'm, like, forced to at gunpoint. Um, but yes, Fiddler is definitely my favorite of all the shows that I did because it's heavily emotional and I really enjoy um, the heavy emotional roles. I mean, I just played one super heavy emotional role um, on the shoot I did in, in Missouri. So that's just what I enjoy, what I like doing. Mm -hmm. And you said your first film was horror. Was you familiar with the horror genre before you got into it? Oh, absolutely. Um, I have vivid memories of when I was like four years old or something, like um, sitting next to my mom on the bed and she's reading me Dracula stories. And I'm like, oh, what happened, snakes? This is awesome. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I love horror. I grew up with that, too. And I've just, um, 
as far as I remember, maybe when I was really young, I was I was scared. I was frightened of, oh, big boogeyman on screen. But then I started collecting Fangoria and I started reading about special effects and how they made everything. And so very, from very early on, I was not frightened or scared of what I was seeing. I was just interested in how it was made. Um, and to this day, I love figuring out and seeing how things are made, you know, and, and obviously acting in films. It's really, really cool. Now I'm always curious about the special effects and how yeah. they do the makeup and like how long it takes and all that. Um, my longest makeup was to get into it. It was eight hours um, in the makeup chair. And then we went outside and we shot for like 40 minutes in the sunset. They needed that that beautiful um, light of the sunset, the golden hour. And then I came back to the makeup chair and spent another two and a half hours getting out of that makeup. That was like full face prosthetic, a full wig, special contact lenses, um, special finger extensions. Um, and then once they got it on me, they had to paint it because it was the first time that it was being used. That's why it took so long to get on. And when it um, when it came off, we had to preserve it because I was coming back for further day shooting. So we couldn't just like rip it off. Yeah. Um, so that was the longest. Um, and of course that project never went anywhere either. We just did a promo for it. And then it was like, well, no, no one wants to invest. So moving on. Oh, yeah. No. All that and it didn't even go anywhere. That sucks. Uh, welcome to my life, yeah. <laughs> Since we're like talking about makeup and practical effects um, right off the moment, is there any that uh, was your favorite in any either death scene or whatever costume or favorite makeup effects? Hmm. I never know how it looks on me. So I'm never really conscious of it, you know? You just get it done to you and then well you go around and you feel normal except maybe there might be a slight weight or a pulling or whatever so i never know really how it looks or the effect that i'm making um there goes siren i will be back <laughs> okay well yes yeah Good for luck. anyone who didn't hear about the tornado warning that she would have to go off for a minute and, oh, and go to the basement so <laughs> um let me see. I in, well, I don't enjoy wearing special effects lenses, but I can wear them because I myself have worn contact lenses since I was like 16, 17. So I know how to put them in. Mm -hmm. um, other people are like, no, stay away. And it takes five hours or something to put contact lenses into other people who've never worn them because it's scary. This right. great big black thing coming at your eye, you know? Yeah. Um, but I, I put my own that. in. I was actually going to ask that about uh, Repossession, the short film that. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. And then you had the black eyes. I was going to say, were those contacts or CGI? I couldn't really tell if those were actual. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry about the dust. It gets dusty. There's the contact lenses that I wore. Oh, okay. So these, these are the ones that I own. Yeah. The mm -hmm. black scleral lenses. And they're gigantic. Mm -hmm. This is probably going to come apart spectacularly or not open or something. But they are literally gigantic. Wow, they take yeah. up that entire circle inside there. Yeah. And um, that that's an art to put that in because you've got to like move your eye to a certain place and then put them up underneath the lid and then pull this down and move it down and, you know. Right. Yeah, it's not like the normal lenses, which are much smaller and much easier to put on. Um, the sclerals are interesting to put on. But, hey, I wear them and I'm not too fussed because I'm so used to lenses. Mm -hmm. um, in that um, film, short film promo that I was telling you about that took eight hours, they gave me um, goat pupil contact lenses, which look like goat pupils. Mm -hmm. And um, what happened there was, I don't know if you know a goat pupil. It's not something most people just happen to know. But sure, I use them all the sure. time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wearing them right now. No. <laughs> um, the pupils have to stand in a specific way. I think it's like that. I'm not sure. It could be like that, but it's got to be at that specific angle. I have an astigmatism, okay? So the lens used to turn by itself on my eye due to the astigmatism. And every time we did a take, 
just after the director yield action, the assistant makeup lady, I had finger extension, so I couldn't do anything. Um, the assistant makeup person had to come in and actually put a finger on the contact lens and turn it back. Hmm. Yeah, every single take. That was special. Yeah, yeah I, I can imagine that. Just thinking about it, I'm like, my eyes are just like, oh, I don't think I can handle that. <laughs> Almost like yeah. a tweak from South Park. Ah, I can't take this pressure. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> um, Chad Rick just came in. He says, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome. Hello. Uh, yeah, and Boom should be back momentarily, hopefully. Um, hopefully not a real life twister going on there. I don't know. She heard a siren, so they got a warning over there. So Yeah. But uh, she should be back soon so but we're good for now hopefully. we're good we're fine how are you yeah <laughs> <laughs> mrs dalfrey comes up with the pie hello would you like one drop or two? <laughs> oh, i miss robin williams he was great <laughs> um let's see about repossession uh also um I mean, yeah those contexts reminded me of like supernatural the demons black eyes i had to bring that up uh how'd you get involved with that um uh, with repossession yeah oh i had known jack for years uh at least 10 years and it, we were always um like threatening to do something together and then he finally got the script wrote the script um and he was like we're doing this no matter what happens and i think um oh that was that was a fun shoot too it was really hot it was sort of kind of on the outskirts of la um really hot and I got on set and they were like, okay, what wardrobe did you bring? And I'm like, wait, what now? Because I had misinterpreted the messages and I thought, well, they would have my outfit for me, but no, I was supposed to bring it with me. And I was like, nee, sorry. Um, so we had to go out like really quickly and, and raid some um, like secondhand stores or whatever to give me something to wear. Yeah. Um, Thrift but stores that, have some good stuff for movies, though. It's like the best place to get wardrobe. Absolutely. For yeah. Um, yeah. Used, used to do so that whenever things. in my drama class for plays or something sometimes, or if we went out, uh, like events at the park or something or whatever, you know, community or theater, or whatever. It's like, yeah, well, check out my costume. But like, yeah, where'd you get it? Me too. <laughs> like, <laughs> yep. Yeah. Every single outfit ever. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. That was. I remember it um, as being hot. I think I mentioned that before. It was hot. Um, but it was a fun shoot. I, I'm glad I got to work with Jack. Yeah. It looked like it was like a deserted desert scene. So I can imagine it was probably hot out there. Yeah. No, it was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that was interesting with like the little ghost town sort of woman doesn't know what's going on. I don't really want to spoil it for people who haven't seen it. But a good little twist to it. So. Yes. She, doesn't, she loses her memory and she starts seeing you and other uh, uh, ghost or people or whatever you want to call them there. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's the word. There we go. <laughs> Big <word. laughs> um, But it is available. I saw it. It was on Tubi. That's how I watched it. So, okay. It on there. Um, so, yeah, anyone who hasn't, that's a good place to check it out. Um, and you said Sam, I didn't see that one, but you said Sam Hell is on YouTube. Yes, it is. And, um, the um, director was Michael Bayuth, and it was by Son of Jason Productions because he actually is the son of someone who played Jason Voorhees. Um, so that's why he called his production company that. Okay. And it should still be there. I think you just have to really look for it because not many people know it's there. Um, right. So it doesn't come like up to the top of the search uh, results. Sam, mm -hmm. S-A-M, hell, H-E-L-L, -L, two words. Really, really good film. I saw it at, at um, like, the single festival it played at. Because, again, the producers were fighting. I mean, does this ever stop? Um, unfortunately not, I guess. You've had some a few bad instances, unfortunately. Yeah. One of the films that I literally poured my heart and soul in, associated, produced, played the lead role, nearly killed myself several times, Um It'll never come out of post because producers are fighting. Mm. That's yeah. a shame. Yeah. Uh, I saw one, uh, I watched a little bit of it, um, like a documentary. I forget the guy's name, but uh, they were doing the movie uh, Rose Thorn. Is that what it was called? Oh, um, that was the movie within the Edward Payson documentary. Yeah, the documentary, their friends. Um, so Our friend John, it? yeah. So, yeah, it was their friend, I guess, passed away and they wanted to uh, finish his movie. Um, and some of them, um, 
I guess special needs a little bit, you could say, and they yes. wanted to finish it and which is amazing that I mean that they had the um I can't think I can't speak to that <laughs> for the reason. Um the compassion to do it and just, mm -hmm. you know, put their all into it and um how they did that. So I'd like to see the movie. I don't know if that was on YouTube or anywhere. Um, but you were a killer in that. Uh, you tell us a little about that. Yeah. Um they shot the the entire documentary is how the three of them um actually brandon nick and garrett actually make their film their friend john's film he had just written the script and he was about to try and make the film but unfortunately he passed from sickle cell anemia um and the three boys decided no we we want to honor our friend's memory by making his film and um garrett is Ted Pace and Edward Payson's brother. So Ted was like, well, I will document your making his film. This is gonna be an amazing story, which it was. Um, I co-produced it along with Ted. And then they, the boys asked me to play in the film, which is John's film, the one that was written, which right. is, which they shot and then was a part of the main documentary. So I was Rose. Um, who kills people. I mean, big surprise for me, but yeah. Right. Um, yeah, we all went off to um, New Hampshire to shoot that a few years back, and it was uh, a wonderful, wonderful time. I think we stayed there three weeks to a month, and we shot the whole thing there. It was really a magical time. Mm -hmm. Loved it. Yeah. Yeah, watching that documentary, I'd like to see the full movie, too. But right. <laughs> yeah, it was just a short yeah. film. Or short, yeah. I mean. It's that was within funny. it. Um, little spoiler alert, but uh, when you threw the knife and it broke, you're like, oh, got another knife. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> like, Reminds me of the time I nearly killed um, uh, Jennifer Hills um, in I Spit in Your Grave, Deja Vu, Camille Keaton. Mm -hmm. uh, we were, um, I don't know if you've seen the film. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> we were rehearsing the scene in the um, back of the minivan where I throw a book at her. Um, and I had the knife in my hand at the same time. So I was like, yeah, I can throw the book and just keep hold of the knife. Absolutely easy. Throw. No, could not hold the knife. It missed her by about that much. Oh, gosh. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. And it was the hero knife as well. It was a real knife. And so that was just a very nice little lesson for me to learn about what I can and cannot do. <laughs> yeah. Um, speaking of I Spit on Your Grave, since that was brought up, did you watch the original I Spit on Your Grave prior um, mm. or did you just uh, act in the script? No, um, I, I had watched the original several years before that when it came on Amazon or somewhere like that. It was it was suddenly available and I, I watched it because I had heard it's so much about it you know mm -hmm, yeah. and it's an amazing amazing empowering wonderful film mm -hmm. and um then when i saw that uh mayor was making a sequel and it there was a role there that i could audition for i was extremely excited mm -hmm. and um it was a very long audition process actually because they were in the middle of negotiating with a lot of different like production companies to assist and fund and all those kind of things. So there was a lot of time between the first audition and then the callbacks and then them finally deciding who they were going to cast. Um, and of course, throughout all that time, it was like, please, please, please let me get the role. Please let me get the role. You know, me saying that to myself. And it was absolutely amazing when Terry finally phoned me, Terry Zarki, and said that they had decided to, to cast me as Becky. I love that role. I love, love, love every minute. That was that brutal, role. but so good. I mean, it's, yeah. it's uh, uh, like, obviously a fan of the first one, like, and you know, you said you wanted it and, but what do you think of the script and what drew you to it, to that particular character and how oh. it was getting in that mind frame? Oh, um, when I play characters like that, I always, not make them right, but make their cause just within their minds. So they do what they do for very, very good reasons and very noble reasons out of love and out of protection and out of everything like that. They do horrible things, but out of what is normally seen as really, really good and compelling reasons. 
and that's where the what the bifurcation comes in of wait i empathize with this character she doesn't believe that her husband um, had an affair or whatever the hell he did with Jennifer Hills. He believed, she believes that he was seduced by Jennifer Hills. Therefore, and Jennifer Hills took away her husband and her children's father. And this is a wrong that needs to be righted, that needs to be corrected. You know? Mm -hmm. And if you go into a role with that sort of mindset that what your character is doing is right, not oh, I'm playing this horrible bad person, they do bad things, ha, 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 they're crazy. No, if you go into a role like that, with that sort of mindset, you'll never make what you do convincing on screen. Mm -hmm. So that's what happens with Becky. And also that's very much what happened with the character that I just played. Um, again, does horrible things, but for reasons that she considers are essential. And everything is done out of love. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> but yeah. that's so true. Yep. Um, yeah, uh, Christy said she's having issues with her laptop. She should be back hopefully in a couple minutes here. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I spit on your grave deja vu. I mean, it's just so brutal, but it's, I mean, mm. in a way you understand what's going on, but it's like they're crazy. They both have these two point of views of what's going on and they don't know the true reason of why she did what she did. Huh. Um, for that, uh, do you have any favorite line or scene that you did yourself? I love the scene at night in the cemetery where I'm talking to Johnny's grave. That was such a beautiful scene for me to play and, and so, so deep and so meaningful for me to play. Um, we had weird stuff happen on set that night as well with... Um, we were obviously shooting in a graveyard and it was the, it is the oldest cemetery in Los Angeles. Um, and we had like weird things show on the monitor and actually on some of the footage and we were hearing strange things. And there was a, I think there was a portion of the film where the time, the timer stopped yet the film carried on or something like that. It was, it was really odd. Um, so all in all, there was a bit of an odd night, but that was my favorite scene to play because mm -hmm. of the emotion and the connection and everything. I just, I love that kind of work. Mm -hmm. And of course, driving the quad, yelling and screaming like a banshee and holding a gun was amazing. <laughs> Get the kill people there. Yes, it's always fun, you know, to be crazy, play those parts or be evil because uh, it seems to me like everybody that I've met and talked to, like the nicest people, and then they can turn into like, psychotic crazy <laughs> killers or monsters and I mean, it's just amazing to see the process and that uh, everybody takes for their um character mm, absolutely uh, and, and, to see, yeah. and to see how they are in person too. well obviously they're not like their character but you know what i mean it's, <laughs> it's nice Maybe we that, are but we just don't show it exactly <laughs> <laughs> these are real skeletons behind me i see <laughs> that they're my victims I mean, yeah. <laughs> uh, what was it um uh, what was it? 15 killings. Uh, oh, here we go. It looks like Boom's back. Let me go ahead. And... Okay. <laughs> Hello. Welcome back. Hello. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Okay. I so, I am on my end here. Glad you're safe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was... <laughs> I was suspecting it to go off. We should just set up here in the big start mm. off so we didn't have to load everything down here. My cat was refusing to come down. I had to go back up and get him and he escaped and went back upstairs and we had to lock him. We have a bathroom down here so we had to lock him in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, All the animals and every, all the people are in the basement right now. <laughs> awesome. Yes. I think some dogs are barking here. My uh, roommate's family's dogs are here. A couple little dogs. Oh, well. Right <laughs> you can hear, but, uh, the two little ones dude and i forget the other one's name and then there's coco but yeah i guess ran right upstairs here i don't know <laughs> but anyway so i haven't uh, had any uh dogs around in a while <laughs> but uh so yeah we were talking about i don't know what you saw christy we were talking a little bit about i spit on your grave i don't know if you had any questions about that or not or what you had um, there no i have was kind of, I was completely logged out when I was transferring things around, so I missed everything. Oh, yeah. Um, 
on the I spin on a grave, you got to ride around on a four wheeler. Did you get like training on that, or did you already know how to do it? <laughs> I had no idea how to do it. Um, in the original script, it was written that um, Becky rides a Harley motor motorbike, and I'm like, that's gorgeous, but I I've never done that, and I can cannot learn in the couple weeks before we were shooting. Um, so we had to look at all kinds of different vehicles. Um, and we finally settled on the quad and the quads really like easy. You just sit on it and switch on the engine and off you go. Um, I loved it. I loved it so very much. Um, I couldn't get enough of the quad. Um, I was, um, even like going from my trailer to where we were shooting on the quad because it's cool. Yeah. And I just loved it. Loved it. Um, there were some interesting moments where I didn't have enough hands to control the brake if I needed to, but hey, we we lived, so it's all good, you know. Yeah, and I, I chose the goggles I wore. There were like two different type, types of goggles, and I was like that one because <laughs> I could see the other one you couldn't see. So, uh, kind of need to see your victim there, you know. <laughs> yeah, and like where you're traveling, it it was. Um, we did a lot of uh, quad work in the cemetery and that's obviously got like gravestones and open holes and all kinds of things that you can drive into or over or land in or whatever. So yeah, I needed to see. <laughs> yeah. I was on a four wheeler once and they had to get me thumb extensions because my thumbs, I couldn't get all the way. So I was oh, like, wow. I wonder how she handled it because my first and only time on it, I had to get thumb extensions. Wow. No, I was fine. It was, it was, it was okay. It was easy. Yeah. Loved it. I want one. Yes. <laughs> I didn't know they made some extensions for those. Apparently That's they they do. <laughs> <laughs> so it was my first and only time on one. So uh -huh. as much as I know about it, it wasn't mine. So, <laughs> but you also had like, uh, for lack of better word, I'll call them like fight scenes in that. Um, do you do fight scenes in quite a bit of your movies? Have you ever had anything go wrong? Or <laughs> All the time. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, in that fight scene, um, especially the one where I was, I suppose you could say, killed, um, I had a, um, a, a pad, a rubber pad on my back to protect me. And the rock that they were hitting me with was also not a real rock. It was like, I don't know rubber or whatever the hell it was um but the actress i was working with i don't know what was going on there but every single time she missed my stunt pad so i ended up with a bruise literally that size oh wow. on my shoulder at the back i mean you can probably even see bruises like, oh yeah that's from my shoot like last week oh wow hmm. yeah and there were worse ones too um so every single time you do stunts i i do stunts um, I do it. I enjoy it. I have the reflexes not to get hit or hurt, but stuff still happens. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah. I don't know how much I want to give away about um, straight on for morning, what I just shot, but the action um, I get to shoot a, um, a, a shotgun several times um, in obviously not a real one. Okay. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but you've got to pretend that you get the kickback from it all the time. And I was in front of something that was behind my arm. So every time I kicked back, I would hit it, which is this. Uh, yeah. So that's how I got those. You give yourself uh -huh. a whole of a recoil. You are really getting into it. <laughs> oh gosh. Be all over the place. <laughs> Yeah. Um, oh, in Percy Jackson, I did all of my own stunts. That was actually in my contract. So um, I had to be taught how to jump off of a scaffolding in the flying wire harness, which was interesting. Uh, it was, I, I have no issues with heights. So that was fine. You know, um, they trained me on something that was about 10 feet high, which was fine. You learn how to put the harness on, how to obey your stunt person's commands, all that sort of thing. Then when I got to set, um, what I actually had to jump off of was like twice the height of what I had learned on. Mm -hmm. So that was fun. Hmm. We had somebody else that we talked to that said that they got trained on something lower. And then when they showed up, it was like mm -hmm. double. I forget <laughs> I who it was. Well, I yeah. think it was wasn't it um, uh, Ellie Nudie? <laughs> 
from My Bloody Valentine? Was it her or maybe I don't I, remember exactly, but yes, yeah, they had to. They got Ellen, trained on like ten yeah. or twenty feet, and they showed up, and it was like forty feet or something. Nice, like that. <laughs> yeah. nice. Like this is not yeah. what we agreed on, <laughs> right? Did you have to do like any of that like motion capture stuff for when you I did and do the. Uh, Yes. Whatever, the fury. Well, the fury. fury. Yeah. Yes. Um, I had the sensors put on all over me. Um, they did whatever they do, record you or whatever it is. Um, I also had to do the voice because I did the voice myself. So the the fury, growly fury voice. Um, it was a very fun experience. We did. We shot that up in Vancouver. Um, it was so cool. I went up there like three times once to learn how to actually jump off this thing. Then the next time to shoot the scene in the museum and the actual change into the Fury to do all the Fury stuff, then back again to shoot the um, scene in the in the school. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they had to redress the entire set and everything, so there was a, a gap. I couldn't just do the whole thing all at once because they had to redo the entire soundstage. Um, and that was Percy Jackson, and that was a long time ago now, but it was wonderful, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I remember that you had to jump off, but I was like, no, they probably didn't have her jump off that. That's probably like some little like five foot thing, and they just made it look like that. So I was actually going to ask if you had to jump off that. So that's good to know. I was like, no, that's silly. They wouldn't ever do that. Uh, yes, they would. <laughs> <laughs> My stunt double, um, she was actually like hiding behind the the big barrels on the top of the scaffolding, and she was like giving me direction, but I jumped. Um, I had a on-screen double so that they could do a one-shot of my character and Percy coming into the room. And then, you know, it follows Percy's looking up and then it just turns around. It's all one shot and I'm on top. And it's like, wait, what the hell? How did she get from there to there? Because there's two of us. Right. <laughs> right. That's good to know, too. I didn't realize that was one yes. shot. Yes. Teleported. What? Wait, what? <laughs> exactly. You know, in in the world of the film, she just flew up there. Yeah. Right. But yeah. Yeah. But well, in our theory. world, there were two so, of us. Exactly. So how was it um, doing all the suit and the voice for it and everything as a new experience? It Wonderful. Um, Chris Columbus is amazing to work with. Logan was cool. Um, Alex, um, Alex Dario, she's lovely. You know, um, if I could have asked for more, I would have loved to work with like Uma Thurman and Rosaria Dawson and oh, yeah. Coogan and all those people. But, um, you know, I, I, went with with Pierce Bronson. I was going to say, <laughs> you, work, you, know, you worked with Pierce Bronson, though. I did. I did. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, right. I did. Um, he was very, very quiet, actually. You don't, like, we were all in the makeup trailer and you don't really notice he's even there. He's so quiet and focused and everything. Yeah. I forgot for a minute. He wasn't seen with you. <laughs> yeah, he was at the museum scene. Yeah. The museum scene. Yes. Oh. Yes. Yeah. And that, um, the line of mine that's in the trailer, which is, oh, Percy Jackson, we have to talk, whatever it is. That was Chris Columbus saying, oh, just, just, you, you need to say something to him. Just make something up. So that one wasn't scripted. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever like, had any other lines like that that wasn't scripted that you had to come up with? Oh, um, often on uh, when, when you shoot, um, depending on the director, they can just let you run on and like continue in the scene. Um, the one I just shot right now, um, we actually went off the page for about two or three minutes, dialogue between myself and one of the main actresses. And we just you know, continued the scene in a specific direction, but just all at living all off the cuff, making it up as you go along and just keeping character. Mm -hmm. You know, it's actually very, it's, 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 it's very, it's, it's a lot of fun when you get to do that because if you in tune with the character's head at the moment and their emotional state or whatever, you really can just continue as them. You know, and hopefully some of that will actually get into the film because I, it was very interesting moment for my character that sort of changes, that could change one's entire perception of her. So I hope that does get into the final cut. Yeah, we'll have to look for it and hopefully it does. Yeah. <laughs> is well, it hard to kind of get into your characters or is it pretty no. easy? Um. Now, at this point in my career where I've done so many like indie horror movies, no, it's really not not difficult at all. 
um, like during the shoot that I just did, um, I had my laptop with me. So I was literally working on stuff from my office um, between scenes. And it was just like, okay, fine, put down the laptop, stop processing orders and come and do a highly emotional scene where you just find somebody's died. And I'm like, okay. And it, it's just like 30 seconds, just refocusing your mind, thinking about what you're doing and just doing it. I don't find that difficult at all anymore. To me, it's just, okay, let's do this. And I'm, I just do it. Was there any differences like working with Disney versus working with the other companies that you've worked with? I, I, I don't believe I've worked with Disney. No, um, I Percy thought Disney was, did. Was Fox. No, Percy Jackson. No, that was Fox. Oh, okay. That's yes. my bad. I thought, no, no worries. I think Disney it was, was saying. Disney channel, so I was thinking it was Disney. <laughs> I think Disney might be developing a series. Yeah, I think I heard that, that they're doing a series on Disney+. Plus. Yeah, yeah, that's where that comes from. Yeah, but the okay. the feature was Fox. Okay. Um, well, that, that feature was different from anything else that I've done because of the size of the budget. That budget was like 90 to $100 million. So, you know, it was gigantic. Um, still someone answered me. Even though I was wrong, it still answered my question. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Um, <laughs> that's basically what I was getting to. <laughs> yes, well, we got Fox and independent movies, so there we go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Those are the two extremes. Yeah, um, <laughs> uh, huge, huge, huge production limousine driving you around, production five star hotel, first class airfare production, huge, humongous, you know, um, compared to the back row in Spirit Airlines, getting your suitcase destroyed. Um, here's a bag of chips and a pizza. Um, you know, good luck in your Airbnb productions. Um, so that's pretty much the difference. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's the same thing. It's just on different levels, vastly different levels. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I guess I should have looked into that more. But I saw on Disney Plus, so I was like, oh, this is Disney film. I didn't even think but oh, no, it's not that they bought Fox. <laughs> yeah. It at Fox do you there we go. <laughs> <laughs> he got out Fox. Uh, <laughs> there's um yeah it's with some independent movies. I know you've done some uh Wild Eye or they've been um mm. released by Wild Eye. Um one of them it was only a small role I know but uh Apex Predators you worked with Dustin Ferguson He's infamous in our little wild eye circle. What was it like working uh, with him? Dustin's amazing. I love Dustin. Um, it was a lot of fun. It was the first time I, I actually met him and worked with him. I obviously I'd known of him beforehand, you know. Okay. Um, and it was just like a reunion of old friends because I'd worked with Mike Ferguson before. Um, so a lot of people I had either worked with before or I knew from social media and that. Um, mm -hmm. We went down to the San Diego, yes, Marina, um, and well, got eaten by a shark in like two foot of water. And that was one of those days where it was like, okay, fine, I'll just jump in here and get all wet. It's all good. Yay. <laughs> nothing can go wrong. And nothing did. <laughs> so, that was what I was saying. Did it though? <laughs> Yeah, because I after like he did that somersault into the water when the shark hit. I just kind of wished there was like a little bit more blood to his stuff. It was more just like nothing that just fell in the water. And I think there was like one scene where they're like a leg washed up on shore or whatever. Okay. But, yeah. Yeah. He, he. I mean, he seems to use like a lot of stock footage too. That's the thing. It's like, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I did like uh, Ebola Rex and Robo Woman though. I liked those. I haven't seen those yet. So. Ebola yeah. Rex was funny with the T Rex and had a bull attack everyone. Oh, God. That, that was <laughs> Okay. But yeah, he makes all, just a lot of random movies, though. <laughs> so that he does. Yes. That's been an interesting time. I, I had to ask. <laughs> so, but, of course. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, who else? Like, who are some of the people, favorite people that you've worked with and then someone you would like to work with? Ha. Huh. Favorite people. I don't usually answer questions about favorite people because I've worked with so many. <laughs> yeah. I know it might be hard. But. Um, let me see. Um, 
films that I've worked on that I absolutely love. Um, Mark of the Witch that I did with Jason Bognaki several years back. There's just something very, very special about that film. Um, I've That one I've actually watched in the theaters. You, it's not often that I get a chance to watch my stuff in the theaters because most times it's uh, released online. So if you're lucky enough to be in the same city as the um, festival that it screens at, well, then you can see it in a theater, but otherwise, no. Um, that one I saw in the theaters and I was just blown away by the feeling of the film and the soundtrack and how that complemented the overall tone of the film. If you haven't seen it and you're interested in Giallo, um, do yourself a favor. It's on Amazon. It's um, It's been called what should have been the third film in the Three Mothers trilogy. Um, you know, That's Suspiria. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I haven't seen it yet, but I heard it was part of that trilogy. Yeah. It should, should have be, been. Yeah. Yeah, some people think that it should have been the third installment it, instead of what we got, which was a little bit, mm, yeah, well, okay, fine. Uh, so I loved that film. Diner, get it, uh, was the first, let me see, I think maybe first time I played a zombie, but uh, my character had a five-page monologue that opened the film. So, you know, above, above and beyond the Gur arg of the zombie, I also got a lot of, like, really fun screen time. Um, that, was, that was fun. That was a long time ago, too, actually. Wow. Um, oh, uh, uh, we did The Haunting of Whaley House for the Asylum with Jose Prendes, and we shot in the Dorothy Bambridge House in um, uh, uh, Long Beach, which itself is haunted. We actually... I wasn't there, but one of the PAs got so scared by something that happened one night that I don't think they ever came back. Wow. Um, no. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have experiences yourself or? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Um, when I was shooting um, Lost Time in the old, um, I think it's the state um, hospital in Los Angeles, um, the elevator was locked on certain floors so that we couldn't go up to those floors because I don't know what they were doing up there. Um, but the elevator I got into after I sort of found the bathroom um, just took me up to those floors. I was like, wait, hold on. You're not supposed to be able to do this. It's a portal. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know. It just went up and opened. And I was like, I am not getting out. <laughs> right. Do what you like. I am not getting out. Mm. I'm not that person. I know how these things work. Right. Um, <laughs> yes. I've done some of these things in movies. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I was the thing that was waiting in the shadows for the person getting out of the elevator. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I just waited and eventually the doors closed and it took me downstairs. But that was odd because it shouldn't have been able to do that. Hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah, just weird things happen. Like, oh, I was doing the um, immersive show Delirium, which we did in like a hundred year old house in Los Angeles. And um, my 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 room, we each had a like separate room and there was a huge big bed in mine. And I felt someone like sit on the bed behind me. So I turned to speak to them and obviously nobody was there. So, and there was a weird house because it had been partially burnt down. People had died in it. Our cast members sort of saw people walk into rooms and not come out, and it was odd. There was weird atmosphere there as well. But so yeah, just depends on where you're shooting. Weird things happen. Yeah, it does. Uh, John Doomsday's script. He wants to know how was it working uh, with Michael? I'm sorry if I say his last name wrong. Uh, Mustastos. Michael oh, Mustastos on the butcher. It was a lot of fun. Um, Michael is is a dear friend of mine. Um, before the pandemic hit, we used to have wonderful screening sessions in his amazing apartment. Um, he's got a big screen and we all like watch movies and ate popcorn and that. It's wonderful. Um, so I was very pleased when he invited me to play his mom in um, The Butcher. Um, I just shot in his apartment and it was again, a long makeup process because if you've seen pictures of my character, she's like completely covered. She's like this decaying corpse out of the shining or something like that. That was the look, that wet decaying look. Mm -hmm. Um, so it was a big, um, 
long makeup process. And then I had to get in the bathtub with water in uh, and do my entire scene from there. Um, so wet, fun, um, even wetter. Um, but it's, it's always fun when you do things like that because it's a new experience. Like, okay, this is how it feels, lying in a bathtub fully clothed with a ton of makeup on your face. Mm -hmm. You know, you normally never do that in real life. Um, so it's finding out all these new things. And Michael was great to work with. He wrote a wonderful scene for me. Uh, hopefully, if we ever get to it, we can do um, The Butcher 2. I'm supposed to be coming back, which is yay. So, yeah, really yeah. enjoyed working with him. Yeah, uh, he agrees that the makeup was fantastic, and Michael's a great guy. So. And back yes. for the the Whaley House, um, I know there's not like extreme makeup with that one, but how long did it take you to kind of ghoul up? I guess there, I think it took about an hour or so, not like hugely long. You know, I don't believe there was prosthetics in Whaley House. Um, just, you know, normal cream on face makeup type thing. Um, for Whaley House, Ariel Braxton and I, we literally went from shooting consumption with up in Utah with like one day we traveled back to Los Angeles and we both started shooting Whaley House. So it was a very, very quick schedule. But again, I loved Whaley House. It was fun. Yeah. When I wasn't scaring the life out of everyone, I was wandering around the gardens taking pictures of flowers, you know? <laughs> yeah, I'm a huge asylum girl, so when I watched that, I was like, oh, this is an asylum film. Then I saw, I'm a big fan of, I'll probably say his last name wrong, but David Michael Latt, the producer. Okay. So he worked on it. I don't know if you got a chance to work with him or not. But I not like, that oh, I yes. recall, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I've been trying to work on him. He's one of many people I've been trying to work on to come on here. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, you mentioned that him before. Yeah, <laughs> him and a few others because he's like the co, I think, co-owner or co-founder of uh, Asylum or something to that effect. I might not yes. know exactly right, but <laughs> yeah, I'm a big fan. I love Asylum movies. Yeah, I've actually done quite a few films for them. You know, always love to work with them. Um, earlier, yeah, I mentioned like when you were growing up watching movies that you just wanted to be like them, whether author or um, a psychologist, which you were in uh, 15 Killings. Uh, how was it finally getting to portray that? And also about some of the research that she done, uh, like with the brain, areas of the brain. How much of that was like actual true research and then just said for the movie? Um, actually, it was fairly true. Um, you know, uh, it talks a lot about um, psychopathy and sociopathy and things like that. Um, and I listen extensively to things like true crime podcasts, and that always touches on aberrant psychology. Um, and you get to know about the like um, uh, traits, traits of the um, psychopath and things like that and sociopath and from knowing that i can tell you that the dialogue that i gave there was was really pretty accurate mm -hmm. um also i have a degree in psychology so oh, yeah. yeah learning all of that was like yeah i remember this um i remember this this wording this dialogue it makes sense to me i can understand it and that really really helped me with learning all of that because there was a chunk of change to learn there was a lot of dialogue. Um, yeah, and it was, was. yeah. And it had to be specific. You couldn't just like make it up as you were going along and just keep in the same vein because in specific psychological terms and you know, it had to be what it had to be. Right. Um, we shot that in a day. We shot my role in a day. Um, yeah. So we worked our butts off for that actually. Um but it was it was a really interesting experience. Again, it was a very um, what's the word intimate personal scene between Steve and myself. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of like just connection between the two of us. And Steve played um, supposed to be um, Dennis Dennis Nielsen really really well. Mm -hmm. You know, Steve is a was a wonderful wonderful man, um, so friendly and kind, but when you see him in 15 killings he's <laughs> not that <laughs> no not even close yeah it's... not even close yeah 
Yeah. That's um, one thing we like about the horror world. It's like everybody, especially like all the ones that play villains. Oh, that's what like, I said. They're super nice in real life, but like on screen, they're just complete. Not like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the opposites of themselves. Yeah. yeah. That was another one, how he killed all those men and what he did to them. That was brutal. And then mm -hmm. uh, it, this is on Tubi. Anyone who wants to watch it. But I mean, what he does, like talking to the bodies and laying with them. And I'll leave it at that. But it's just like what does go on in someone's mind like that? That it just seems normal. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's an interesting topic. Yeah, that is. I mean, how does an actor get into that headspace that makes them makes what they do convince everyone who's watching that it's it's actually real you know yeah, yeah. very interesting topic um i distinctly remember swimming that was back in the day where i used to swim like half a mile a day 30 laps a day and i would run my lines in my head as i was swimming so that really helped me get a a handle on all of those lines because it was a lot of dialogue um mm -hmm. not that i find learning dialogue um difficult I, I i really don't but again that was technical you know it wasn't just hi how are you which could be hi are you okay or whatever you know it was yeah. super technical it had to be like it was um but that was a really good experience steve and i um did another film for um yanni actually um i think that one is almost ready to be released it's called flow and i've been seeing some of the trailers um very different uh very different type of film about a um an old gentleman who after having uh, an issue with almost burning his daughter's house down uh, gets put into um an assisted living facility and of course he rebels against everything and he hates it there and he decides to become a rap artist so um yeah <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> That should be interesting. Yes. <laughs> to look at it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, so it's flow. Flow. Um, you can probably track down the trailer for it on YouTube, mm -hmm. um, but I don't think it's out yet. Really, I don't. Yeah. Okay. And um, you've done a lot of anthologies, little parts in different anthologies. Uh, I'm a big anthology fan. I love horror anthologies, different stories. Um, in the, let's see, I forgot where I was going with it. <laughs> Um, do you have like a favorite role that, you, well, here I am with a favorite role again. Um, <laughs> <laughs> never mind. Like, uh, what was it? Murder, the murder uh, manual. How did you get involved with that? Oh, was that the one with um, Emilia with Clark? Church, the, the group leader, the church. and Yes, yes, that's exactly it. Um, I knew, um, I had known Michael, our director, for quite a while. And um, I knew he had written that short film. And it took a long time for him to get all these ducks in a row so that we could shoot it. I think we shot in 2016 um, over like four day period in the house in Altadena, Pasadena, one of the two Dinas. Um, again, it was a role that I really enjoyed because it was authoritarian. I fall into authoritarian type roles very, very easily. Um, and it was deep and emotional and you do horrible things for the what you think are the right reasons again that type of role um so i i love playing the character and it was the short film and it was getting amazing reviews it went up and altered the youtube channel for short films people blown away by it loved it and one day i see it's part of an anthology and i'm up there with Literally, the mother of dragons. She's in the film too, and I'm like, "Holy shit! How did that happen?" Mm -hmm. um, so, <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah. You you never know what could happen to the short films, mm -hmm. um, like the one I did for Dennis and Kevin. Um, I we did a short film called Curtain, which I don't think ever got further than their website. But I got to know Dennis and Kevin, and the next thing they're saying, "Okay, there's a role for you in our project, Starry Eyes." Uh, when Starry Eyes was still a short film, it was a very small role, and then it grew up and it turned into this amazing feature. And I've got a really, really nice size role in it, just mm -hmm. because I knew Dennis and Kevin from the short film I did. So yeah, that's I just watched that for the first time today before we came on. I've always been meaning to watch it, but I never got around to watching it. So I watched it for the first time today. <laughs> yeah, it's good. 
It's a good film. And Alex, our leading lady, she's just gone on to do some wonderful, wonderful things, mm -hmm. especially with Mike Flanagan. She's one of his like team now. She's in everything he does. Mm -hmm. So it's so wonderful to see her making, you know, really making it out there. Yeah. She's great. I met her. It was either at Horror Hound, I think it was a few years back before COVID hit, of course. But yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, speaking of short films going uh, turning into films, um, was it uh, Pretty Boy? Or I think it is with the mascot. Or must, it was it Pretty Pretty Boy, right? Is yeah, that, is that out yet? Or I was trying. To um, no, um, not quite yet. Okay. Um, I know we're still sort of in the process of signing some final contracts and things like that with the distributor, but soon, soon, okay. soon. Because I was trying to find it, I'm like, uh, let's see, mm. I, uh, because I've seen the short of it. It's, it looks really good, and I'd love to see a full length of that movie. That should be really good. So yeah, soon to track that down. Okay, and you need to watch the film Blind first. It's um, Pretty Boy's a second in hopefully a series, um, but Blind is the first film. And in order to oh, understand okay. Pretty Boy, you need to watch Blind. Oh, okay. Blind's yeah. out. It's been out for a couple of years. Yeah. Okay, I didn't know that was a second part to that. Okay, yeah, Guess yeah, we'll look that up there. Oh yeah, because it it picks up like seconds after Blind finishes, so you know it's literally an immediate sequel. Oh, nice stuff. Mm -hmm. In the sixty seconds to die, yeah. you're lying there, you're acting by yourself, you got all this snot and everything. Was that like effects, or was that like actual like? It was real. <laughs> <laughs> no, when I cry. I always cry. Um, one reason is that I'm allergic to the menthol, which makes other people cry. Um, I'm not sure if you know, but to get tears in a movie, there's a thing called a menthol stick. It's like lipstick, but it's menthol. Yeah. And actors put it there and then they cry because menthol is horrible. Um, <laughs> I cannot use it because I'm allergic to it. And also I don't like it. I prefer the purity of the emotion um that leads me to express the emotion by actually crying and that's what i do i don't like like menthol sticks at all but hey yeah i've heard of their way. Before, but yeah i was like i wonder if that's like actually like snot or if they just kind of like put like goo or something on it. all my snot is 100 percent real <laughs> <laughs> was it hard kind of acting by yourself because basically no. your co-star is a cat so <laughs> yes crazy cat lady um no um if i can think myself into something i don't need outside stimuli to make me react to what i'm thinking yeah. you know um literally when i was shooting straight on till morning um last week it was like um okay uh all right and this time i i would need you to cry so uh uh yeah action um, and literally in something like that, I would have to settle my mind, get myself in the right mindset, find the emotion within myself, pull it out and do whatever the director wanted me to do. And that's what I've developed over 15 years of working in film and even longer in theater. So I have I my ways. Even imagine that's this amazing to me that you guys can do stuff like that. Yeah. It's just like, you find out a technique that works for you and then you get really, really comfortable and with it and you know it very well. So you can do things quickly, you know? Yeah. It's just like anything else. I, I'm sure there's other movies, but like the bunny man massacre, you're not really first death, but you're the first kill in the scene and then it goes on to extravagance to the rest of it is it hard to just kind of play dead where you hear like all this <laughs> it depends <laughs> uh it depends how comfortable you are wherever you're playing dead you know it's like wait do i close my eyes do i leave them open um is this a comfortable place to like lay for 30 minutes sort of thing um I find it interesting because I'm always one of the people who, if there's a dead body on screen, I'm like scrutinizing it to see if I can watch them breathing, you know? So I always try and hold my breath for as long or at least breathe shallowly, you know? Um, but yeah. And um, Bunny Man, all I can say is they let me drive that bus for a little while. Oh, you actually got to drive bus, it. I got to drive it. <laughs> Again, new experiences. Yeah. 
Nice. <laughs> I was wondering that too, but I just a little, sure. a little, bit, little bit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so besides driving the bus and the quad and everything, any other uh, first time experiences that you really enjoyed? Oh, so many of them. Um, like jumping into swimming pools fully clothed um, backwards. Um, just so many different experiences. Like when we were shooting Mark the Witch, we were in one of the um, apartment buildings off Hollywood at Vine. And um, Jason was like, well, just go down onto to Vine and just lay on the sidewalk and I'll shoot you from up here. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so in the middle of everybody's normal day, there I am laying on the sidewalk. They're like, what the <laughs> hell? With somebody taking uh, pictures or video. Probably, well, I know. <laughs> you know, um, yeah, these things that we do. Oh, going to Ralph's and forgetting I had zombie makeup on. <laughs> It's like, why are you looking at me so strangely? Oh, yes. Okay, fine. Um, What's Ralph's? Oh, it's a supermarket. Yeah, I guess oh, it's okay. on the West Coast only. Okay. Yeah, apparently. Um, well, I'm in Wisconsin. Apparently. I've never heard of it. So. Okay. I've never, I've lived in Illinois most of my life. I've never heard of it in the Wisconsin. So, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Not in the Midwest, apparently. <laughs> Not in the Midwest. Uh, what else have I done? All kinds of things. Um that I, oh, when I was in, um, I was shooting agoraphobia um, in, in, in Miami um, and the makeup lady had to leave early. So she left me with a face of like coffee grinds. I don't know why. Um, so that all had to come off and I didn't know how to do that. So we were driving around with me in that again. Um, you know, I have had to work with cats. I've had to work with dogs with kids, uh, all sorts of stunts, singing zombies. Yes, we're zombies. zombies. We're zombies. <laughs> yes, we zomb all day and we be all night. Um, that should be up on YouTube. It's uh, It was a short called Undying Love. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, that, yeah, I was nearly bitten by a rattlesnake on that one because we were like out in the, you know, field somewhere and on a um on a trail sort of like up a mountain and i was way down this trail and i, I was hearing the <laughs> and i was like oh that's a cicada because i'm from africa so we don't right. have rattlesnakes mm. and eventually i realized i know that it actually wasn't a cicada it was a rattlesnake and i was just lucky i had stayed where i was because mm. it could have been like you know terrifying um that was the one where the people used the wrong equipment or something for my makeup and they didn't have it. And they were just like had little bits of it. So they stuck it on my face. Okay. Whatever works, you know, um, a lot of different experiences. That's what I'm saying, but it's all fun. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's all fun. Is there any like type of character that you haven't got to play yet that you would love to play? That's interesting. Um, nowadays I only like playing roles that I sort of haven't played before that I feel a really strong emotional connection to, um, that challenges me in some way because I've literally done so much. It's like, and I want to do that again. I've done it 20 times. It's boring now. Um, if we're talking creatures, I haven't played a werewolf. I've played pretty much everything else. I think maybe I would like to play something with water. That could be interesting and fun. Yeah. Be like a mermaid or something uh, like I, that. Yeah. Because yeah, I, I, I love water. I can't water. think of anything yeah. else that's in the water, but I've thought my head. Uh, yeah. Very, very at home and comfortable in water. Um, so that wouldn't be an issue. And I'm. I'm sort of game for anything. I'm a bit stupid in that way, really. Fall down these steps. Yeah, okay. You know. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know. Um, there are absolutely actors um, that I would love to work with that I'll probably never get to work with because they're like way up there. Um, but I still have a wish list. Yeah. <laughs> Actresses, especially. Um, whose work I really admire and whose technique I really, really admire 
And I would love to just be able to play with them and see what we could make and discover. And because when I play scenes like that, like, like the heavy emotional stuff, to me, that's all real. Obviously I know it's not real, but the emotional trans uh, progressions and whatever that I go through are real to me. I really feel those emotions. And that's interesting because things can happen when you're playing a, a, a scene with a scene partner you know, things that you don't expect. Um, and it's wonderful to be able to re react in the emotional state in the moment and just see what happens. That's the beauty of it. That's the lightning in the bottle when you just see what happens. You know, it's not all this rehearsed stuff. And I don't know. I always leave like 10, 5% to, to chance to whatever happens. I like that. Um, yeah, there are people that I'd like to work with just to see how it would feel working with people on that level. You know, I just want to play. That's that's what I want to do. Yeah. Have you ever kind of like uh, fangirled out of somebody that you've worked with? <laughs> Have I? I don't think so, you know. I know there are people that I would yeah. if I ever worked, <laughs> no, if I ever got to work with them. Question. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I'd be a like a blubbering wreck if I ever got to work with like Jillian Anderson or Vera Farmiga or Sarah Paulson, Jody Foster, all those people. Like, no, I wouldn't remember my name, never mind my lines. You know. <laughs> it's like, hi, you little why? Uh, I'm I, 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 sorry. Yes. <laughs> Sarah Paulson's awesome. I know I've yeah. had that happen twice, just like me oh, yeah? like, at like uh, conventions or whatever. And I went and met somebody and I just, I froze and I couldn't speak to them. <laughs> 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 but of course I've never acted, but I just imagine it's like, like when I seen Bruce Campbell, it was my very first con. I was seeing Bruce Campbell and just, we went back behind the curtain to get our photo op and couldn't say a word to him. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> oh! Hey, <Ruby>. hey. <laughs> I did say something to him. I, I think I said something about you're awesome or something as we was leaving. It was just so stupid, and it's like you're. <laughs> oh, nothing stupid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people I've seen uh, different guests that like there have been some people who have that reaction, but a lot of them are like, Oh, it's okay. And they're all nice about it and comfort the people and a lot of good experiences at conventions. I'm, I'm glad they're finally coming back. It's just, yeah. It's been a while. So. Yeah. Oh, the other one I wanted to ask you about was the uh, Raven Wolf towers. It was a three episode show before the movie. I didn't, I just noticed that it said it was an episode before the movie. I saw the feature. Um, but was it like continued on in the movie or how was it? Um, I think the movie is the episodes altogether. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I did that with Charles Band and all the wonderful people. Um, full Moon. I was going to say it was at Full Moon. moon. Yes. Yeah. Love, love, love my Full Moon family. I really do. Uh -huh. um, again, that was fun. I mean, I know every single time I'm saying that was fun, but. <laughs> I'm sure it is. I mean. No. <laughs> It is. I mean, I had the most wonderful twin children in, in that. that. Yes. And any any time working with Charles is just, just magic because he's wonderful. I love him. Mm -hmm. Love, love, love him. Yeah. It's been a while. Mm. It was interesting to find out who was in charge, too. <laughs> like, oh, okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we'll stuff happens <laughs> yeah so yeah but about, you were, oh sorry go ahead no it's fine go ahead no. it, it he was also in two different paranormal activities i didn't get a chance to refresh my memory on these this week but are those characters connected at all it sounds like they're kind of small parts in both of them but i didn't know if they were like connected in some way it was actually the same character um but i you can you can scrutinize part five but you will not see me because um we shot our scenes but the scenes were not used um they went in a different story arc um it was yeah playing the witch again that i played in 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 part three that i i was seen for a very very short amount of time there was a yeah, I think it uncredited, yeah. if i remember correctly. yeah yeah, yeah. We both might say uncredited on yeah, MDB or something to that effect. And I said, yeah. I was like, oh, you're in two different 
uh, paranormals. I was wondering if they were connected at all. Yes, but. they were, but hey, number five didn't make it. You know, they went different direction. It happens. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yes. <laughs> Yes. We didn't know it was paranormal activity when we were shooting it. We were told oh. it was sports camp. And we were like, okay, we'll do that. Sports morning. camp? That's yes. interesting. <laughs> Not even anything similar to it, though. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when um, there's like no yeah. sports involved whatsoever. Nothing. Like, Nothing. Well, yeah. <laughs> when we did uh, Never Back Down, they called it Get, they called it get Some. <laughs> yeah, it happens often. Yeah. The, um, yeah, if people are trying to hide what they're doing in a specific location, because everyone would come and try and see something, um, then yeah, it's a, under a different name. Well, I had to sign a non-disclosure on that one before I even auditioned, so that's how like hush hush that one was. Yeah. I'm just looking through some other stuff here. I mean, sorry, they're going right into the back so room here. <laughs> Apparently, must be getting all clear. They're getting prepped to go back upstairs. Mm. Oh, yeah. um, Somebody behind you is waving, so I'm waving at them. That's my husband. <laughs> Hi. There's my son. Hi. Um, oh, trophy heads I wanted to bring up. That was a really good one. Um, was that full moon one? I can't remember. Yeah, yes, it was. Heads was a full yes. Moon one. Yes. Uh, uh, I guess, was that before? Yeah, before the Ravens? It was, it yeah. was. Because um, I auditioned like three times for Trophy Heads before um, I got booked. And it was the first time I knew I got to know Charles and everything. Um, oh, Trophy Heads was just so much fun. <laughs> I love how they're all talking to each other. It's so, it's so great, all the screen queens. I mean, that was a yes. um, great, great idea. I, f I forget who wrote that. I'm got a look of it right here. Was it Charles who wrote that, or he just produced it? I'm trying to see. Oh, he directed it. Okay, directed and, it. And yes. he wrote it with one other. Okay, yeah. But yeah, yeah, that was such a great story having the scream queens being killed off, and again yes. another crazy mother role. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, I love that. Uh, we shot on location. We shot in the studio. Um, I got to meet all the wonderful scream queens, um, like Brink Stevens and I are friends to this day. You know, um, yeah, it was just so, so, so much fun. And Charles allowed me to play. He would be like, okay, do the scene like that. Then, oh, do it like this, So which I really enjoy because I just, you know, you just change it up and something new is something fresh. Um, that's, that's a lot of fun. Um, I remember shooting a scene there. Um, I was just doing like a voiceover from behind the set sort of thing. And I, I was running a fever, actually, I think. I had quite a high fever because I didn't know where the hell I was or what I was doing, but I just remembered my cues and to say my lines, but I was so out of it that day um, that I remember distinctly. Oh, and all the knitted things that I wear in trophy heads, um, I knitted myself. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, so there's a fun fact. All the mm -hmm. scarves and the sweaters I made myself. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> nice. Any other interesting facts we might not know about any movie like that? <laughs> Probably tons, I'm sure. <laughs> Probably tons. Yes. Um, uh, blah, blah. Nothing that I really. Oh, I have a um, action figure. The the Fury has an action figure from Percy Jackson. So that's out there somewhere. Um, yeah. Yeah. You're an action figure. I know. <laughs> it's, it's kind of funny. Well, uh, kind of ironic. Hercules, since that's still with the gods, the cartoon Hercules, he's like, I'm an action figure. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, let me see. I have shot in cemeteries at 3 a.m. in the morning too many times to even think about. One was a pet cemetery, though, and that was a bit creepy. Yes, yes, it was. That was the time I was shooting Hansel versus Gretel. And I arrived there and they gave me like 50 new pages of dialogue to learn in like 30 minutes. And that was not the best, but okay. Um, it was so cold that when they put the special stuff on my hair for the character, my hair literally started breaking off because it got so cold so quickly. So that's also not the best. Um, but hey, things happen. <laughs> Bruises, hair freezing, all just part of the job, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, yes, yes. And uh, 
all the creatures were stirring. What brought you to that movie? Uh, Rebecca McKendry definitely brought me. She just contacted me and was like, I have a role for you. And when I read what it was, I was like, yes, I'm completely down for this. Anything that's like weird, like off the wall, odd. Um, I, I love doing that because I, I don't know. I've always liked extremes rather than the norm. Um, and that role was, again, so much fun just to you know go there and be weird and odd and mm, it's like a mix know? of theater and mix of uh anthology and christmas and yeah i discovered it when it first went to shutter and it's become one of my favorite christmas movies because <laughs> i don't think it's left shutter if, if it has it always comes back but okay yeah, so i've you know i've watched it a couple different times now <laughs> yeah Another one of my favorite anthologies was um, Southbound. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. A lot of people say they love Southbound, and I, I can quite see that. Um, really, really well done. Again, oh my God, in Southbound, I nearly froze to death. <laughs> um, we were shooting out in, oh, I don't know, Palm Palmdale, somewhere out there, and it was really, really cold. And the boots I was wearing, the zippers at the back decided to break. So I had these huge gaps in the back of my boots, uh, which you don't see on the screen because it was dark and you don't look at boots. Um, but it was so cold um, that I almost couldn't walk near the end because my feet were frozen like that. It was, yeah, not fun. Um, but again, you just have to push through, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, when we were shooting, was it Diner? I think it was Diner. We was, got stuck in a snowstorm. Oh, when we were shooting Consumption, we were up in Brinehead Resort in Utah. Many snowstorms. <laughs> you yeah, know? I was going to mention Consumption too. So, yeah, that was interesting. Yeah. <laughs> and with the, like the ghost roll sort of. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, first time I saw a lot of snow, or mm -hmm. any snow, really, was when well, I was, it was actually shooting. snow. Then it wasn't like effects or anything. You really filmed in the snow. Yeah, we did, we did. Yes, it was cold. Uh, my my new car at that point was almost three quarters covered in snow. Uh, one day, so that was interesting too. Um, shooting outdoors at night zero degrees in a mini dress oh. lying on the ground yeah we can get to do some really stupid things sometimes but you know <laughs> um just i feel for you <laughs> living a in long time ago the like cold I've area up. of the u.s i, I get you <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if you've seen my makeup. Um, probably not because it's not out yet for Sunday Night Slaughter. Um, they made me up as a tree. Um, I was like this woodland spirit sort of thing, and literally, I'm a tree. Um, so that's gonna come out at some point. It was, I couldn't speak, no, couldn't communicate because tree. Uh, but off what? screen, did you have the urge to say, I am Groot? <laughs> I am Groot. I am Groot. Okay. I think I would. I get a picture. <laughs> of course, you're not yeah. while you're going, but you know, when everything's cut, you just like, you know, <laughs> right. time to oh, be goof off. Yes. <laughs> I actually love making people laugh on set by doing stupid shit like that. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. I um, I said something else. Uh, oh, who was it? Um, oh, I can't think of his name. But there was somebody else that he said he was like on a like sled or something that was making him glide, and I would have been like George or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, been on segways to make me glide. Yes, because oh, I would have fallen off the skateboard. Um, segways are fun though. You have a yeah. fighting chance of not falling off. Yes. Um, I have been in the cellar underneath Orson Welles' house in Hollywood Hills. We were, sh yeah, we were shooting a promo for a film that again, didn't go anywhere. Um, and 
one of the scenes was literally hauling around in the cellar as a ghost or something like that. So that was an interesting. And that that place is supposed to be haunted too, if I remember correctly. Yeah, apparently it was. I don't think we felt anything weird though when we were there. Um, but yeah, so the the house that we just shot in was like 160 years old or something like that, and um, beautiful, beautiful house. I don't think we trashed it too badly. Um, <laughs> but hey, horror movie, blood, things happen. Yeah. 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 This one's like a hundred some odd. If you can't tell, but it looks like a kind of a barn door behind me. <laughs> but yeah, this is like a hundred some odd year old house. Yeah. So we got some weird stuff that happens here. Especially oh, yeah. Right behind me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, that could be a good. I didn't want to say anything when my son was like, hanging out down there, but yeah, <laughs> but yeah, we've had some stuff down here. Huh. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Uh, uh, one of the things that was said about the house we just shot in was that it eats things because we lost things left, right, and center, which is usual for a film production, I must admit. But yeah, the house eats things. Um, we also had a tornado warning while we were shooting. Um, we didn't hear sirens or anything like that, so we didn't have to go down to the basement. But um, we had winds, and um, one of our huge big frames, lighting frames, fell over and actually bent. So that caused quite a bit of a delay. Okay. So, yeah, all of us from Los Angeles were like, oh, our first tornado, yay! Because we have no fucking clue, okay? <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, could you hear the when it went off uh, here? Could you hear it on the speaker? Okay. Yes. Yeah. We, yeah the, we live really close to hospitals, like literally right across the street. Mm -hmm. And one of the sirens there's so this pretty loud when it goes off. Okay. Yeah. I was wondering if the mic picked it up or not because my mic upstairs is pretty sensitive, so I figured it probably did. Yeah, it yeah. did. Mm. Yeah. It's like, yes, uh, I was saying when you were off, it's like, we don't need a live movie of Twister going on. <laughs> the tornado. <Jesus. laughs> uh, like, let's go. Yeah, my, hus my husband was outside because when we go to the basement, there's a back door right there. And my husband was standing outside. You know, we're Midwest. <laughs> He's standing outside looking because mm -hmm. I think it's close. I hear roaring. <laughs> <laughs> As I'm like, I'm like hauling. I, I got a backpack with like my laptop and my, I got my tablet on a stand here. So I got my backpack. I'm like hauling down. I'm trying to get the cat wrestled down here. And he just comes out. I hear roaring out that way. <laughs> like, yeah, we're not from the Midwest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh, we're looking for a scump. Yeah. Lieutenant, you call this a storm? <laughs> Lieutenant Diane, he went mad. <laughs> yeah, no, we get rain maybe three, four days a year. And we're like, oh my God, it's raining. Ah, you know. <laughs> so I don't have know. any have you been through any earthquakes yourself or oh a couple, not like huge ones here. Um, but yeah, a couple shaker things. Yeah, it's not fun. Um, you never know what's going to happen. You never know when it's going to happen. Um, and it's not fun. I come from Africa, which doesn't have earthquakes. Mm. So that was a new experience for me, you know? Right. But it's, it's okay. I bet there's one that I remember and most in Illinois of all places, but uh, at the time we lived in a duplex and the like main level of the house was like underground. So we didn't feel anything, but the cat I had at the time was like coming from like the top level of the house and she was on the stairs as it was shaking and you could see her <laughs> shaking with the stairs, trying to get down to the basement. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't like terribly bad. Of course, you know, Illinois didn't get that. Poor I don't cat. remember. I was like 10 or so when it happened. So I don't really remember like the magnitude or anything. Yeah. Yeah. I just remember my cat viper like shaking as she going down the stairs. It's like all I remember of it. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. Um, earthquakes, they can stay in San Francisco. Yeah. No. But I don't know. We, 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 we choose to build these humongous cities on a fault line. So, like, what do we expect, really? <laughs> Yeah. 
Yeah, but it's you pretty know. much no matter where you are, it's, something's going to happen. Weather, storms. It's just... Yeah. Can't help where you are. <laughs> but what gets me is, too, like, I mean, I know they can't help it, but people that live near volcanoes, I'm like, oh, my gosh, why would you want to live near a volcano? I'm sorry. It's just... Shh. Right? So, yeah. Oh, look, pretty lights in the sky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just another day running from the lava. <laughs> oh my gosh yeah no with us it's like wait hang on there's another tsunami warning and um but hold on i live in the valley so it's got to get over the mountain range of malibu so i should be fine um that's literally my thought process sometimes <laughs> you know <laughs> uh, yeah i don't know <laughs> Uh, it's, uh, as long as it's not the day after tomorrow, <laughs> like, uh, it's like, uh, yeah. maybe about a thousand years, then I won't have to worry about it. <laughs> exactly. That's fine. Yellowstone can do its thing then. That's fine. <laughs> We're good. We're all good. Exactly. Oh yeah. So I disaster know. movies. I couldn't imagine living through that. That'd just be, I don't know. Right. <laughs> Being swept yeah. away, dying soon, just boom. <laughs> But then again, it'd probably be just so instant you wouldn't even know. Who knows? But, Who but knows? anyway, on that lovely note, <laughs> 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 burned alive, killed. Let's see, what else can we discuss? <laughs> this is the real house of horrors now. <laughs> getting, into <laughs> right. disaster, getting into natural disasters. <laughs> I don't think I've ever done a film about any one of those. I mean, oh my God, imagine just the sheer discomfort that you need to go through to make that look believable mm. well if you ever get cast in one just know a midwest person will go outside to look at the store <laughs> 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 it's in our blood my dad did the same thing oh yeah uh, she, it does i should say not did but yeah as soon as the whistles go off we go outside or we go look at the windows i think i coming. see it it's coming <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> yeah when we were uh, we were supposed to be shooting something in johannesburg south africa uh we didn't because the investors decided to pull out at the last minute so we all just went there and had a vacation yay um we uh were driving back from a um a game park we had spent the day at a game park something like that and we got caught in this humongous hailstorm. i mean we're talking hail Ooh. i've actually got videos of it up on my facebook page uh, we just had to pull off the side of the road and sit there for like an hour because it was gigantic hailstorm. Um, very, very unusual, unprecedented. I mean, yes, where we were, you used to get like thunderstorms every night just to like clear the air and whatever, but this hailstorm. Yeah, no, we didn't quite know what was going on there. Mm. Yeah. I imagine that's scary. Yeah, I've only seen little hail. I've never seen like big mm. hail, so I can imagine. Yeah, yeah, so. hail, but nothing like big chunks. I don't think I've been. Mm. But, but yeah, they can cause some damage there. I can imagine getting hit with that. Ooh, <laughs> yeah, out. But, yeah. No, we just like stayed in the van and you know try yeah. to make drugs. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is going on? <laughs> ah, yes, exactly like that. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I could imagine. <laughs> so you said that was a movie that didn't happen. You said it yeah. didn't. Um, I was literally packing to catch my flight, um, and I got a message or a call or whatever from the um, producers saying, "You know, sorry, the investors have pulled out. We cannot shoot. But if you still want to come out, you know, obviously you'll just have a vacation." So like the main the main cast was there for like three weeks or something and we just we were taken to game parks and restaurants and all kinds of wonderful things stayed in four-star hotel with the one amazing restaurant swimming pool everything so we were like yeah fine we love this um so yeah, yeah all things nice paid we're, we're, yeah we'll do that so yeah um, yeah all <laughs> things paid <laughs> game parks yes. why not nah yeah. i don't want to do that <laughs> oh <laughs> that's it uh, yes oh yeah. hi baby yeah now he wants to come down here willingly 
Uh, <laughs> now you're the sire. Uh oh. Yeah, he yeah, now he to... went down here. He has to come visit. Oh, he's done. Now <laughs> <All right. laughs> get out of that. Hello, goodbye. <laughs> oh yes, yes. Yeah, that's our lovely Max. Well, technically his real name's Magneto, but he doesn't go mm. answer to that, so we call him Max. He answers to that. Wow, <laughs> he answers to something. Yeah. <laughs> he's my cat terrible. is like la la la. That's my <laughs> cat. Yeah. Yeah, we had one. We have one outside at the moment, and um, she's usually an indoor cat. And my dad unfortunately let her out some weeks ago, and she's been wandering around outside. But I saw her, I called her name, and at the first instant of her hearing something, she's off. Because there's no way in hell that she wants to come inside after she's tasted out outdoors. Yeah. You know, so. Uh, Freedom. You know, I'll put outdoors. a leash on him and let him go out mm. with the dog sometimes, but I don't let him go out without a leash. Yeah. He eats everything. Like his previous owners, like you got to watch him. He's already had tapeworm like seven times. Oh geez. <laughs> so hey, he goes out with the leash and nothing else. Yeah. No good <laughs> so, plan. Because we just got him like three years ago, and I think he's like eight or nine, something like that. Mm -hmm. So he's a previous owner, and they got him from um a shelter, I believe, because he had the adoption pamphlet that she gave me. So. He's been around, so I don't let him go outside without a leash where I can watch what he eats. Yeah, no, definitely. I have to watch him constantly, make sure he doesn't eat nothing he's not supposed to. Uh, All right, cat. Yeah. <laughs> got an eater. <laughs> so he does get outdoor time occasionally when I know I can handle him and the dog together. <laughs> yes there was a cat at the house that we just shot at um his name was eddie england um of course um i called him eddie spaghetti after um eddie from it in stephen king's yeah. book so to me he was eddie spaghetti he was like the most adorable cat ever he he got um closed in the second floor bathroom because we were shooting everywhere um but he was you know he was such a good cat didn't do anything it was just very grateful whenever somebody came in to like play with him or whatever so beautiful cat yeah mine's Fun annoying <laughs> he tries to murder my son he makes us all go to his food bowl like 50 times a day it's like anybody who stands up immediately meows and will lead you to his food bowl so you can stir his hard food <laughs> he's got us trained well <laughs> yes either fill my bowl or i will eat this 20 month old bird corpse <laughs> you know <laughs> just eat it and... <laughs> oh my god <laughs> so does your cat bring you any presents i <laughs> uh, no, they're not allowed outdoors um except for louise and she ain't gonna come back well that's why um, yeah i know she'll watch us from a distance and go ha 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 yeah, Free at last. <laughs> exactly. And her brother sitting inside going, Hi. <laughs> help me. Yes, help me. Help me. <laughs> you are the crazy cat lady. <laughs> oh, this is nothing. We only have four here right now. Um, when I came over from South Africa, I brought 21 cats with me. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Long time ago. That kind of reminds me of I, what was a Big Bang Theory when Sheldon had all those cats that he was naming. This one's Jazzless. <laughs> He's just like naming them all. That was funny. Yeah. I, I haven't seen that, but I have the shirt. Soft mm. kitty, warm kitty, little bowl <laughs> of fur. <laughs> you know, yeah, well, angry this... kitty, nasty kitty, grr, grr, grr. That's, yeah. Happy kitty, purr, purr, purr. <laughs> Yeah, that's what he makes um, Penny sing when he sings, because his mom sang it to him. He's like, sing soft, kitty, to me. Yes, I have the shirt. Yeah. Uh, yeah, whenever you get a chance, go to YouTube and, like, look that clip up. And he goes, um, what are all these ca cats? And it's like, it's a cloud, a clouder, I think it's called, like a group of cats. Clouder, I think I'm saying. Okay. It. Yeah, that's a group yeah, of no cats. Clue. <laughs> yeah, that's a group of, that's a group of cats. <laughs> okay. So, little fact there. There you go. I got some facts too. <laughs> <laughs> you can learn some interesting stuff here on the House of Horrors. <laughs> yes, so, you can. <laughs> so, what other um, 
besides acting and stuff, any other fun, interesting facts or hobbies or talents or anything we don't know? Um, I make blankets. Oh. I make squares like this. I This is hand knitted. And then I sew them all into blankets. Mm -hmm. So I'm still doing the knitting thing. Um, interesting. I can <laughs> speak another language. I can speak Afrikaans. Oh, I am the eighth great granddaughter of Rembrandt van Rijn, the um, Dutch painter. Um, what else? What else? I am a Cancer Leo, which is a very strange, strange um, combination. Yeah, so, I've never yes. heard of Humic signs there, but yeah. I'm not big into that too, so I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much me. Yeah, I like reading. I like music, all kinds of music. Um, I like Excel spreadsheets, which is odd because not many people do. Um, <laughs> I have to be entertained and stimulated all of the time. Otherwise, I get very upset with everything. Um, that's sort of a curse. Um, I tore the cartilage in my knee several years back, which is now giving me extreme difficulty with everything. So that's another curse. Um, but you learn to live with everything and adjust and figure things out. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much me. You know? Only child, yeah. Nobody wanted another one after they had me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm an only child, too. <laughs> I know how that is. <laughs> I'm 12 years apart from my brother, so. <laughs> almost, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm an almost only child. <laughs> I made it 12 yeah. years. <laughs> so. uh, I don't think I have any yeah. other questions or anything. Any other questions you had, Boom? Um, I also see you have own a production company. You want to tell us about that or? I used to. Um, oh, you used to. Yeah, we did a, a quite a few indie films. Consumption being one of them. Uh, Far away being another, which is a wonderful um, fantasy film that was shot in the Philippines. Um, not that I went there. I did the work in LA. I mean, um, and a couple other things um, that are very hard to find right now, like uh, way down in Chinatown. Um, but unfortunately, to produce, you need time. You need money. Um, neither of which I really have for something like that right now. So maybe if I win the lottery, then we'll do that again. Yes. Um, so, yeah, not much happening on that front right now. Oh, okay. Oh, it'd be nice to win the lottery. <laughs> Wouldn't it, though? Yeah. You have to sort of buy a ticket, which you is gotta buy the I ticket always exactly. forget. You kind of got to buy them to get that's the same thing it's like i wish i could win the lottery yet i don't buy tickets i never buy tickets yeah no, no I, I just want to randomly win here you go here's a million dollars thank you yes, <laughs> I yes that's it. Fine. it can be a birthday present christmas i don't care i don't care pick it up on the street yeah it's mine now <laughs> yeah <laughs> Or just find the winning ticket or something like, what's this ticket? Oh, what's these numbers? Holy shoot, who lost that? Thank you. Could be like the golden <laughs> ticket. Yes. Run home, Charlie. Run home, yes. Charlie. <laughs> Without the chocolate. Yes. Yes. Hey, you can, have, you can, can have your own chocolate factory. <laughs> chocolate factory. I saw a meme. Someone was saying how like the grandpa was like all sick and everything, and then when he said he had the golden ticket, he just jumps out of bed and starts dancing. Like, <laughs> you just sick two minutes ago, and now you're off to the the chocolate factory chocolate yes. always does that yes it cures all <laughs> apparently yeah yeah that's pretty much me tonight i'm going to be knitting more blanket squares tomorrow i'm going to be working so yeah life goes on do you knit the blankets just for like yourself and family or do you sell them anywhere? I sell them. Um, I am so incredibly lucky to have a standing order of 10 blankets a year from friends in Texas. Um, so it takes a long time to knit these blankets and then I to imagine. sew them all together and everything. So that's pretty much my year done. Um, so yeah, I just chip away at that project. I'm on blanket four for this year. So I'm getting there, getting there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I watch whatever on, you know, films or series or whatever while I knit. So I consume a huge amount of um, things to watch. 
So, yeah, which is fun because I like watching movies. I like making movies, watching movies, all aspects. So, yeah. Everything about movies, yes. <laughs> Wonderful thing. I love movies. I'm a movieholic. <laughs> so, um, besides uh, horror, um, what other stuff do you like to watch? Um, thrillers, um, fantasy, science fiction, things like that. Um, I don't really like comedies or crime or, or anything like that. Occasionally I'll watch action. Um, dramas, more cerebral dramas I enjoy. Um, I'll always pick some kind of intricate drama over the latest Marvel movie because it's like, yeah, see one Marvel movie, you've basically seen them all, as far as I'm concerned anyway. Um, musicals I love, animation I enjoy. Um, not anime, but like Disney animation, things right. like that, really enjoy. Um, but yeah, it's, it's mainly horror or um, British series. I love British series. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, they've got a lot of a lot of talented people, um, and I just like The Crown is oh my goodness that that's an amazing amazing series. So mm -hmm. I watch a lot of series as well. I, used to, um, I love Are You Being Served? I used to watch the crap out of that in high school. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, did, you ever, did you ever watch the original Being Human with the ghost and the vampire? They were no, they, they're roommates. Uh, yeah, that's a really good one. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's called Being Human. Not the new one with that was on Sci-Fi Channel, the original UK one. That was really good. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's for one part. Um, the the werewolf and vampire. They know, you know, um, they move into this house, and it turns out uh, there was uh, a woman Annie who was murdered there, and they become friends with her. And there's like a storyline with her and what happened there, and. It brings on later other werewolves and vampires, and it's it's a, it's a fun one. <laughs> and like yeah. she makes, she makes um, all this tea, and the, I forget his name. I think it was George was the werewolf. Um, I could be wrong. <laughs> I could be wrong, but I think it was. And he's like, "You make, you're making tea, and you can't even drink it everywhere." I look tea; it's driving me crazy. <laughs> and he's like, yeah. <laughs> and she's like, "I'm sorry." <laughs> it's like, funny. Just, I mean. I, it, but it's got, it, I mean, I know I'm not big on comedy, but it's got its drama, action, horror theme. I mean, it's its a mixed blend of everything where you can mm. enjoy it no matter what you like. You know, it's got Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> comedy, I like some comedies. Mm -hmm. For instance, I love uh, What We Do in the Shadows. Oh, I don't know. Yes. I can't wait for next season. Oh, my God. I know. <laughs> I, that, I, that show I would love to go on. You know, it's that wacky off the wall comedy character stuff that mm -hmm. I, I really love doing. I love acting in horror comedies because mm -hmm. it's so damn stupid and dumb and it's and it's mm -hmm. like over the top characters, which I really like doing. Um but yes, what to do in the shadows. Yes, I would love to be on that show. Somebody should yeah. get me on that show very, very quickly. Yes. <laughs> um I would yeah, that would be so cool. I just love everybody on that show. Yeah. 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 yeah and a I don't know how you, oops, sorry. I don't know how you feel. Well, this is not a TV series, it's a movie, but it's like one of my favorite zombie movies. So I'm going to put it. <laughs> it's British. It's uh, Cockneys versus Zombies. And it's a zombie comedy thing. And if you haven't seen that, I see it. It's like starts out in a nursing home. And it's <laughs> like if you watch the trailer, at least I think it's in the trailer, but there's a chase scene. Like one guy, he's in a walker and he's like trying to get away, and the zombies like chase. <laughs> and they have like this real like like chase music going on. <laughs> I absolutely love it. It's like I said, it's one of my favorite zombie movies. Cotton yeah. versus zombies is so funny, but it's a British zombie movie. <laughs> I must track it down. Yes. Yeah, um, uh, I love British stuff, so I'm sure I will love that. Yes, thank you. Yeah, actually, uh, Harvey going um, from what we do in the shadows, he's going to be in Spookala in a couple weeks. So I can't wait to be him. That's going to be funny. So, like, oh, there you go. If you meet him, I'll it's... tell. I'll be like, hey, I interviewed Maria Olson. I don't know if you know, she might want to be on the show. <laughs> <I'll grow up. laughs> Absolutely, uh, that would be well, awesome. Interesting to see who has a <laughs> vampire on it, maybe or something. Or <laughs> well, there was even uh, what was it the that witch that exorcist in one episode or something I forget. yeah they also yeah. got werewolves yeah. on there too Kate. yeah they got all kinds of things on there There you go yeah <laughs> so, yeah See, 
There you well, go. I, hey, I think have they had a werewolf yet? I can't remember. Yeah, oh, they yeah, have. Yeah, they they had this tribe of werewolves that they the tried tribe of to, werewolves. That's yeah. what it was when they were yeah. like, fighting the tribe of werewolves. Yeah, so there yeah. you go. So Maybe there's your werewolf role. Like she has always wanted to play a werewolf, and she's would love to be in this movie. There you go. There's your pitch. <laughs> yes. If I could go, I would totally do it. <laughs> I'll, I'll send a link to the interview. I'm like, there you go. I'm like, yeah, I'm real soon. <laughs> uh, 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 yeah. Yeah. No. Fun show. <laughs> yes. The, the, the dance of the, um, of, of the vampire council. Yes. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> it was so funny. They have like every vampire from all the movies. <laughs> I love that just so much. Uh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and then we're listing off people that couldn't be there, and <laughs> yes, and the uh, the blade going blade. in on Zoom, and <laughs> yeah. oh god, yes, and Tilda. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I'll come and play a vampire for three seconds. Tilda Swinton, like, hello. Yes. Yeah. Yes. No, I yes. can't think of her name. The one that does Louise's voice from uh, uh, Bob's Burger. I can't think of her real name, but she's in it more frequently now, too. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. She's the one that kind of vaporizes and comes back and has the kind of high pitch voice. Okay. Oh, oh yes. uh, who was um, like, talking to them about who will lead the council in the last season. Is that who you're talking yeah. about? Okay, yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes, yes. I can't think of her real name. I just know she does the voice to uh, Luis, the little girl in Bob's Burgers. Okay. But, oh, I didn't yeah, know she did yeah. the voice for that. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, if you watch Bob's Burgers, you can tell it is like the same. <laughs> you don't even like change your voice really. But but yeah, I just, I'm a blank at her name. But yeah, she's, she's in quite mm. a few things too. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a fun, fun show, man. Would you ever, um, since you did the voice for the Fury and everything, would you mm. ever want to do any voices for animation in the future, or just? Stick? Oh, absolutely! If I get the opportunity, um, I don't get a lot of voiceover because I still have an accent from South Africa, so you know it's difficult. Um, but I did do a voiceover uh, role in the film, The Amazing Adventures of the Living Corpse, which was a full-length horror animation. Um, so I, I, I did that. Yay. Um, but otherwise I don't get a lot of opportunity because of the accent. And that's fine. That's yeah. Fine. Your character can have an accent. Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. We don't Accents care. Accents makes it more interesting. Yeah. True. Yeah. No. Convince the casting directors of that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Not everybody thinks the way we do. <laughs> But I get what you're saying. Yeah. Besides that, um, can you have you practiced any other accents or dialect or uh, that you are good at? Or I actually love doing it. My take on Eastern European. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I can still speak Afrikaans, um, and yeah. I can still put on the South African Afrikaans accent, which is very different to my normal accent, um, at least to me. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I speak in this weird hybrid of South African and Californian, you know, uh, because if I spoke in my normal South African accent, people would find it a little bit difficult to understand me. Um, it's a lot flatter and we don't use our R's, R's, R's <laughs> like we do here. Here, here, I'm here, I'm here. There's the difference. Um and it's just something you pick up. It's just something that I pick up anyway. Um, if people are, are speaking to me in an accent, I will pick up the accent that they're speaking to me in. And that can get awkward sometimes. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I love to speak in the, the Eastern European accent, yes. Something that comes naturally to me like that because I don't know. It just is that I love. You know, um, that's a, that's pretty good. My uh, cousin is married to a Romanian woman, and yeah, so uh, I've heard it quite a bit. <laughs> right, my my agent sent me in once for for an audition for a a, a native Russian speaker. Uh, they didn't have to speak Russian, but they just had to have the accent. 
and um, I got through the audition. They were like, are you a native speaker? And I'm like, mm, no. <laughs> you know, um, but I can do the accent. Um, I did not get that role. Uh, but, yeah, it was, I mean, your agent is like, I'm South African, so they'll send me in for Australian, New Zealand, British, and I'm like, I am not a native speaker of those countries. You will obviously hear that I'm not. So I don't know why you sent me in for this role, and all I will do is embarrass myself, but thank you anyway. <laughs> you know, um, the weirdest thing was um, we did, there was a audition for like a troop of zombies for Knott's Berry Farm, which is a theme park here. It was for their... Um, Halloween month or whatever it is. And the casting notice specifically said only people six foot and over, which is fine. My agent sends me in and I get called in. I'm five foot five and a half. Okay. So I'm like, you know, there's, there's like a lineup of people and the casting director made it very obvious. She was like, hi, 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 hi. And I'm like, not hi. <laughs> It was like, why are you here? And I'm like, I got through the callbacks on that one. I don't know why I got through callbacks on that one. Because I'm obviously not six foot and I couldn't wear the costumes or anything like that. But that was bizarre. <laughs> well, I guess you must have made an impression on them enough to, they was going to overlook the height for you. <laughs> I guess, you never know. But that was weird. <laughs> Oh. This badge, everybody's there, and then just one person up, oh, a little shorter. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, it's never ending fun. Yes. <laughs> oh. oh, wow. We've been talking for two hours. What now? Yeah, yeah <laughs> almost two hours. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, it's reaching two hours. Uh, we'll be sure, you know. Um, is there anything else that you wanted to promote besides the film you just did? Or Sure. Um, recently, um, the films that have recently come out is uh, Danny and the Vampire. And um, there's no such thing as vampires, which apparently there is, but okay. Um, so look out for those two. Okay. Um, and the next ones to come out will probably be uh, Moon Garden, a beautiful fantasy film, and um, Beneath Us All, which is, wow, more vampires. Um, so those two will be the next two out, I think. Okay. So, and we keep on, oh, and I can mention it now, Scare Package 2. Yes. All right. Yes. Yes. I For love months and months we couldn't say anything. Yeah. yeah, I got a Darcy shirt on and the first Scare Package uh, promoted on Joe Bob. And I absolutely loved it. I got two shirts with Scare Package. So I'm like super excited for this one. I emailed the people for an interview, but they haven't contacted me back. Mm -hmm. so. But I kind of waited a while before I sent it. I got sidetracked. So it's probably mostly my fault. Because so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I said something on Twitter about sending something up for an interview. And they said, like, yeah, email us and... Like a hmm. month later, because I'd got side directed from that. Oh. And so it was like, yeah. hey, that'd be a fun one to promote. Too, yeah. <laughs> so they probably, you know, wasn't even looking for it anymore. Right. <laughs> that might be a good one to promote. Maybe message them again and see. Who yeah. <laughs> Especially since they'll be coming out, they'll want to promote it. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, and, and Pretty Boy, of course, yeah. um, momentarily should be. Should have come out um, Halloween last year, but contracts legal whatever is you know it'll it'll be there yeah yeah all right yeah we'll keep an eye out for that and uh any social media you want to share or twitter or instagram or twitter or facebook or <laughs> um my facebook page um maria olson mm -hmm. yes absolutely um I've been pretty quiet on Instagram and Twitter lately because I'm just so busy with everything else. Uh -huh. um, but I am there, Maria Olson 66. Um, if anybody wants to follow an account that doesn't move, um, that's fine. Okay. Um, but Facebook is the one where I will share most of what's happening. My Facebook page. Okay. So again, Maria Olson. Yeah. All right. Oh, and I just want to give a shout out to the person who manages my Facebook page. So wonderfully well for me because who has the time? Thank you, Tasha. Love you so much. So 
Tasha manages it for me. I can go. All right. <laughs> well, uh, thank you very much. I we appreciate you taking the two hours to join us. <laughs> <laughs> and I do apologize for our whole tornado issue. <laughs> oh no, it was it was it was interesting. Like, oh, is she coming back? What's going on? I heard the sirens. Oh my god! I it's a live show, show for real. <laughs> this happens. laptop I only basically have. Uh, so sometimes we go down to my parents' house, so I don't have my big computer system. So I got this laptop so I could do this show when I'm at my parents' house. So this has been sitting in my backpack since Easter. Oh, wow. So I like trying to like set it up down here and fight with everyone, you know, get everything else to manage to get down here. And I got a bum leg, so it takes me a minute to get down the stairs. Anyway. I'm right there with you. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I'm like trying to like gather everything up and all this. And I was like, ah, oh, my laptop. So I hurry up, pop a message because I couldn't get my Facebook to open up so I could uh, get the link. Yeah. But I got her all yeah. figured out. Now it wants yeah. to update, but it'll. it'll well, of course it does. <laughs> of course it does. No. <laughs> we have this thing only gets used uh, like a couple times a year, so I was like, okay, we got to hurry up. I was gonna just do my phone, but I was like, nah, I'm not doing that. So I'll just drag my laptop out. I probably would have been quicker if I would have logged back into my phone. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, I'm yeah. Phones are nice, but when it comes phones talking to me about everything else i prefer email because i'm not sure how to get a link from my phone to my computer to my email to yeah it's just way too much too much sorry <laughs> <laughs> well at least we got everything <laughs> yes yes okay thank you so much for this this was so much fun Yes, uh, appreciate it. So maybe we'll have mm -hmm. you back when Scare Package comes on if you want or whatever. We can talk about that and yeah, the other I stuff. Yeah, I'll be stuff. excited. Cool. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I cannot wait to see it. I haven't seen anything. Um, mm -hmm. It was just so much fun shooting it. Oh, my God. I can imagine. Very yeah. different character to what I'm used to playing. Yeah. If wow. is anything like the first one, I can only imagine. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be two times. We had <laughs> so much fun watching. <laughs> yeah. I think this one will be too. All right. Okay. Thanks again. Have a good night. You are welcome. Yeah. You too. Right. Bye. 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 <laughs> awesome. Yep. Ow. Again, that two hours just went by so quick. <laughs> it did. Yeah, it didn't seem like, well, I spent probably like, what, 15 minutes trying to haul into the basement so. <laughs> so you have to go back and watch that yeah we were talking about i spit on your grave and uh what else and I, it was funny as i said the same thing that you said about how uh, the nicest people play like the craziest people <laughs> i was like yeah yes most definitely <laughs> it's an outlet for sure definitely you get like all your built-in stuff like out and about so you don't have like stuff that's like holding you back i guess or that's yeah. probably not really how i want to word it but i can't think of a better wording right so yes uh so next week uh we got titus i hope i say his last name correctly him <laughs> him over yeah i'm not gonna say his last name right now but i'll i'll, I'll get it right before then so anyone who knows him watching sorry <laughs> but yeah he's another polonia pal that hasn't been on yet so he's been in a lot of the same ones close to uh or uh shark encounters oh my god i cannot talk to that <laughs> shark encounters of the third guy um return to splatter farm all those so yeah yeah yeah, I was pretty shocked. I didn't know if he did stuff like that because I don't really see much, you know, post with him on it. So I was like, I don't. So I've never suggested him. I was like, I don't know. But I did try to reach out to Ken. Well, we had him on the yeah. one thing, but to get a single interview with him. But yeah, I never thought about Titus. Cause, but yeah, yeah, you saw that and I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> It's like, I, think he's almost like, I mean, one of the few that we haven't yet, uh, still, uh, I'll probably have to send a message. Uh, Yoli would be fun to talk to also. <clears throat> I muted myself. Yeah, I saw that. I was like, yeah. <laughs> Those of you listening won't see, but yes. <laughs> 
So, but yeah, I was saying it makes it easier on me in editing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Make it easier editing. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I think who else? Yoli, we haven't had on yet. And I can't remember the other guy's name, but been in a few. So, <laughs> but. It's like, we'll get them all on. Anyone who's done a Polonia movie, just come on by. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, hopefully, especially Mark. Yes, one day, one day. He's just so busy. But <laughs> Yeah, I know. <coughs> no. Yeah, I can't wait to see Sharkula and Amityville in space. That's going to be so much fun as two. So just another month or so, they'll be out. So. <laughs> Seems no, like I think the space one was out already. Not yet, no. <laughs> I've seen everybody talk about it. I just thought it was. Yeah. Well, it's been talked about a lot and promoted and, you know, and he got interviewed. Yeah, since that. I've seen it talked about so much, I just assumed it was out where people were watching it. Yeah. And then, of course, how long have we known about Sharkula? Like, about a year now? I True. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like. So. But, uh, yeah, and then... Uh, um. Spookala is the following week after next week, so I don't know if I'll do anything from the hotel room or not, or I'll have to figure that out, and we'll talk about that, so. But. <laughs> it's like, yay, convention! I can't wait, it's gonna be so much fun. <laughs> yeah. So Get to work with uh, Deputy Doofy all weekend. <laughs> Dave Sheridan. So. Oh, okay. Uh, he kept saying his name, I was like, I never end up looking him up, and I was like, well, he was also in name, but I couldn't place who he was. Oh, he's now, also in Victor Victor Crowley. He was in that uh, Devil's Region. I mean, he's done a bunch of stuff besides. <laughs> <laughs> Smell my finger. <laughs> uh, I knew I recognized his name, but I couldn't place him, and I just kept forgetting to look him up. Yeah, but I know what you're talking about now. Yeah, and him and Felissa Rose do a bunch of movies together, and yeah, so. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, well, he, uh, I think we talked about having him on the show at one time. Yeah. It, he thought he was going to be able to come in in January, but I guess he got busy because I know him and Felissa were traveling a lot. And, gotcha. And so, but, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll see what's up when I see him next weekend. So, well, the following sure. weekend. So, yeah. Cool. Wow, that's weird. I just that's weird. A message came through on Instagram from Maria about the link and it said, "Got it, thanks." But it just now got sent to me. Like, really, two hours later, I just got <laughs> <laughs> that's weird. <laughs> it must have been a delay or something. <laughs> I'm gonna be like, "Yes, I see that. Great show. Thanks again." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's funny it just said like hey wait come back <laughs> must have been delayed message <laughs> oh that's funny Did I talk about a delay in messaging <laughs> okay thanks <laughs> got it <laughs> so well, I guess that's it. Unless anything else going on, I'm going to go ahead and get ready to go to bed, get up early, and dash some breakfast hours. <laughs> now I'm just looking at the weather to see if there's any other instances that we're going oh, to yeah, about down here. That's, the, that's what I'm doing right now, but it looks like the storms are Passing to the north well. of us now. Yeah, stay safe. Uh, yeah, they're all, all joking. Milwaukee. All joking aside about Twister. I mean, that's uh, not fun, so... Yeah, everything's in Milwaukee right now, if you see all that. Yeah. <laughs> That's all in Milwaukee right now, so yeah, we're good now. There's nothing remotely close to us. So yeah, it doesn't look like we'll be heading down to the basement anymore today. I was shocked. Uh, we had two storms come through. One was about 4 o'clock, and I had a little bit of thunder, and I thought... Because I was, I keep an eye on the storms because we, our dog's scared of thunder, so I gotta have things prepped. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, plus, you know, if we have a tornado or something, I have to make sure we have stuff to like run downstairs with, like lanterns and whatnot. 
so I had to make sure to be prepped ahead of time. And uh, there was one coming through at four o'clock. I thought that one was the one that we'd get the tornado with, but it just thundered a few times and was done. I don't know if you saw me post the picture of guy laying in the bed and the dog was on top of him and the cat was right next to him. <laughs> I didn't see that. Duh. Yeah. I was like, you can't tell there's thunderstorms going on right now. <laughs> and then uh, I think I posted on Instagram, but it like spread it. But um, yeah, so he had the dog, she's wrapped up in the blanket and he's <laughs> cuddling with them. And then, um, that just goes real quick and went through. And then I saw that there was another storm coming in, like right as I was getting on here, I was like, man, my luck is going to go off and I'm going to have to. So before I got on, I got to make sure I got the backpack that I normally take to mom's. I made sure I had it to where I could grab it. So I had that all set up and ready to go. So I could get my, you know, my, um, uh, things um stands and stuff like that ready to go <laughs> right but yeah i wouldn't expect in this thing to be stupid and not want to log into facebook <laughs> yeah. Well, <at> least <coughs> on, though, so because yeah that would have sucked if you weren't able to come back on <laughs> yeah well if it wouldn't have logged in i would have got another one i have a stand another stand that I have a mount that I could put the phone on. That way I don't have to hold it. Yeah. So I would eventually got on my phone. It would oh, just, yeah. wouldn't have been as good as the laptop. Yeah. But You're like I'll make it work. I'm just coming <laughs> way. Yeah. If I, if I couldn't, have, I was about ready to give up logging into my laptop, and then I just wouldn't have been able to hold open extra tabs yeah. on my phone. So I wouldn't have been able to, um, like go in comments or anything like that. But yeah. That's why I wanted to have the laptop so I can have my different tabs in case I needed to go into the comments or take care of anything over there. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Got a broken uh, computer chair down here that my laptop's sitting on. <laughs> <laughs> Got an outlet over here because, like, over in this area is where I do my dog grooming. So there's, like, a bunch of, like, dog grooming stuff on the side of me over here where it's plugged in so yeah. grab all it i put everything back in the backpack and haul it back upstairs <laughs> yep Alrighty then <laughs> well have a good night and thanks for everyone who's listening well we'll be listening on spotify and tuning in uh oh someone just came here saying hey but we're getting ready to sign off we're gonna <laughs> echo zero no. uh, i'm not sure who that is i guess um no, I don't know. Someone might be new. I don't know. I guess before we go, I'll just talk to her real quick. You know, I don't want to ignore someone who just came in. Oh, bye. right. Yeah. I don't mind. I'll, I'll stay for a minute. Welcome, Echo. Welcome, welcome. I don't recognize the name. Have you been here before or not? I don't. Because <coughs> always welcome the new people. <laughs> welcome yeah. to the party. Yeah, Maria Olson already left, unfortunately, but you can catch the replay if you'd like. Any horror stuff you want to talk to? Um, someone Bones woke up from the dead. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what that reference to, to but I'm assuming yeah, I think he's Bones. a friend, a friend of Bones. Who comes in, maybe. Somebody woke up from the dead. I guess he was sleeping and Bones woke him up, I, I'm guessing. Yeah, I'm assuming that's who he's talking about, Mr. Bones, but... Yeah. I uh, was assuming that's a he, I don't know, I can't see. Uh, I just call everybody he, unfortunately, I need to stop that. <laughs> Is it like a... Uh... From Good Burger, I'm a dude. He's a dude. She's a dude. We're all dudes. Right. Yeah, I was watching Joe Bob last night. And um, what movie was it? Um, it was the second movie. I can't think of the name of it off the top of my head. It had a real weird title. And the girl went into this room and there was people that was obviously dead people sitting in like chairs and couches and stuff. And they had sheets over them. And 
she like goes in and like starts pulling the sheets off and then there's like all stunned music like she's like shocked that there's a dead person there it's like you could tell it was like the secret room that you're going to i'm like dude I, my tweet was like dude do not go into a secret room where there's obvious bodies sitting on chairs with sheets over them and be shocked that there's bodies with sheets on them. <laughs> Great doomsday. Thank you. Thank you. How are you going? I know you had something while we were on too, I think, if I saw the post correctly. How'd that go? I got to watch a little bit of your interview on Doomsday. Doomsday called me out, gave, gave my name. <laughs> it's uh, what? I'm just teasing, but because I usually try to keep that quiet, but it's hard when you're on Facebook because you have to have your real name on Facebook. <laughs> oh, what? When we were talking, you mean? Or yeah. What? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm not mad about. It. I'm just teasing, but you'd be able to know if I'm mad. I'm just. Te- <laughs> How dare you? I'm a no-namer. <laughs> I try to be. For oh. the most part, I do try. Like, on Twitter and Instagram, I will not say my real name. At most, I'll say my first name, but never my last. Well, technically, technically, <laughs> we want to get down to technicals. My last name on Facebook is not technically, legally my last name. <laughs> it should be, but it's not. <laughs> I never went and changed it, so technically it's still my maiden name. <laughs> I just I need the money to go pay to get it changed. I gotta pay for my name. Forget yeah, you gotta pay to get it changed. You gotta go down the courthouse. And yeah. I put it off because like two weeks after we got married, we moved to Wisconsin. So I was like, I gotta get a new license anyway when I move up here. And then shortly after that, it's like with the moving, and then I got hurt shortly after that. It's just and then I think after that COVID hit and then I was like, I haven't had time to go to the courthouse or had the money at the time or whatever to go. And I should have just changed it before we moved. It would have been easier, but still with that, you're wrapping up the wedding and gets things ready to move. <laughs> so yeah, I never legally changed it. Eventually it will be legally uh, what it is on my page, but eventually <laughs> they're changing it to boom no, just yeah, i should <laughs> <laughs> just call me boom <laughs> and my playstation friends actually gave me that nickname <laughs> boom <laughs> oh. yeah. all right well um I'm really going to head out, though, because i got to get going, unfortunately. But uh, thanks, Echo, for coming in late either way. Uh, hopefully we'll see you next week. Um, if you haven't, join the Facebook page, House of Horrors Podcast, and you can keep in touch that way, too. And, and if there's anything you want to share as well on there, it's an open page for whatever <laughs> or related. And so, all right. Yeah, well, I'm behind on... I'm behind on editing. I have downloaded the Ginny Russo um, thing. I just haven't had time to sit down and edit. So that's not posted up yet. I'll try to get to it maybe Monday. Okay. But then I got to do this one now too. <laughs> I'm getting a little behind. Aaron, Aaron. I had like three or something like that. Because I was a little behind and we had like a double show one week. So... I was a little behind, so I had like three, I think it was last week or the week before, that I had to do three and like, I did three in like one day, and then I got really behind. Yeah. Well, not really, I'm like only one show behind. That's all right, it's not a big deal. <laughs> It'll get up eventually. Well, I mean, I need it's, to get still, it's still on YouTube anyway, so we're good. Right, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, for Spotify, anyone who wants to listen to it who can't watch on the road or whatever. But yeah, hey. it'll get up eventually. So... Alrighty then. <laughs> Have a good night. <laughs> you too. Bye. Bye.